to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And I'll note at the start of the meeting here that all the uh, planning board members are here in person that are attending. For those on Zoom, we have Peter, Ben, Nicole, Joan, Steve, and Ahmad, and with Rocco and Bob uh, not here today. So let's go right into it. First up on the agenda is Hudson Heritage, amended phase one site plan and subdivision. I see David. Good evening. Uh, Kyle Ahern with Labella Associates. Uh, Marty Berger. Uh, Marty, are you on now? Let me see here. I'm not sure if he's on now. He was going to dial in and listen in. Um, yeah. Go ahead, okay. Kyle. Yeah, I don't see him, but that's okay. So we were last here in February. Um, this is for the, what I'm calling the um, rail trail building I amended site plan. And there's, you know, a whole bunch of other things that have been folded into this amended site plan as construction has progressed on phase one of Hudson Heritage. Um, so I have a clouded set. Um, if you want me to share my screen, I can just dive right into some of the changes. Um, we talked about them at the last meeting. There's been a couple since then, uh, but um, yeah, you went over quite a quite detail last time. So what's what's changed since then? If you want to share, and show me that. Sure. Let's see. I mean, the main thing is going to be um, building I. So let me do this. Screen one, share, okay. All right, so building I, um, as you will recall, the drive-through was previously on building L. That's been moved, uh, maintaining this, the overall number of drive-throughs, but um, now it is here, building I. Um, the drive-through has been revised since the last time we were here. Um, and it's actually changed a couple times. I'm trying to remember what it was last time, but I believe it was already a double drive-through last time. It went so. to a single for a, a moment of time, and then it's back to a double, uh, just a slightly different version of that. Um, we are providing the number of spaces for this specific um, restaurant's high volume um, drive-through prototype. Um, that's based on for you know what they think they'll do in business. They think that'll be a high volume site, so they think they need 14 uh, queuing spaces uh, to support that. Um, we did. I know there's a couple comments that we received on that um, because, as you can see, the bef you know in the drive-through lane itself, before you go out into the parking lot where you are potentially blocking some parking spaces, um, there's 12 queuing spaces. Uh, we provided some striped queuing behind that. Um, it does block the two spaces. We were basically modeling this after uh, my personal favorite Duncan on Route 9, which is uh, right in front of Bounce there. Um, they had, that's probably the busiest Duncan I've seen in the area. I um, mean, they have this, this same kind of setup. So if the board thinks that that functions, you know, the way it's supposed to, essentially, at, whether at their peak hour, um, you know, you might block two spaces. But the people parking there also do know that there is striping right, right there. So there's that potential that it could back up, and they might have to wait until, you know, it, uh, it settles down a little bit. So if not you know we can we can remove those spaces if the board thinks that, that they you know they'd rather just have those spaces uh, not be there um you know there's a couple questions about the drive through um, and bypass lane and as you are leaving the pickup window you might um, not look in your mirror and see that someone's coming up the, the bypass lane so we'll look at that might, might have to do some additional striping or something to uh to mitigate that um, there was also, we just got about an hour before the meeting from county planning. Um, they had a couple comments about building I specifically. Um, you know, they, they basically, they recommended that we rotate the building clockwise, which would essentially put the drive through right along Winslow Gate. And I know last meeting that was something, we talked about a potential bypass lane, and the board seemed pretty opposed to having um, 
the drive-through lane or bypass lane even between the building and Winslow Gate. Um, so, I mean, I, I leave that up to the board um, as well, but, um, you know, it, se it seemed like what we are showing as a configuration without the bypass lane and without any any driving between the building and the Winslow Gate, uh, Winslow Gate Road was uh, the board's preference. Um, besides that, I mean, we just added a concrete median so people aren't driving through those parking spaces to get into the building I area. Uh, we did that here and also here. It's just a one foot strip, basically just a curb line. Um, and besides that, uh, that's about it. You know, there's some changes to the sidewalk just to give a more direct route from, from that intersection down to the door, uh, minor stuff like that. Um, besides that, um, all of this we spoke about last time. There were a couple changes to some grease traps, um, specifically building L. There's now a grease trap on the south side where it was previously, and there is st still one on the east side, um, uh, so that tenants could have separate grease traps, which is something that we've seen happen at a couple buildings before. Um, I don't see any other changes here. Yeah, everything else was talked about last time. Okay. This is just a closer view, or no, this, sorry, wrong sheet. And those are just, you know, those grease traps that I just talked about. Um, All right. Or rise here. Yep. So, that, I mean, that's, that's the main, you know, beyond what we talked about last time, those are the main changes. Um, so. Thanks, Kyle. Uh, sure. You have uh, Eric uh, go through the department recommendation? Sure. Uh, the department is recommending uh, for this round, the department is recommending there's, there's a lot of that the planning board defer action on the application tonight and uh, obtain additional information in response to the comments from staff and the other departments. I guess to highlight some of the issues uh, on the proposed subdivision to split off the, the landfill, there's still a lot of questions regarding that mm -hmm. and how it will be managed, uh, how it will be uh, managed in the future to avoid any liability to the town, the arrangements for that, um, among some other questions for it. Um, the board, it, it appears that the application is, uh, staff thought it was reasonably consistent. Overall, the, the application was reasonably consistent with the prior um, development master plan and secret consistency, but the board, if it has questions about that or wants to discuss it, that will eventually be a determination that must be made by the board for this application. Okay. Um, on the site plan, um, there are, again, there are a number of questions raised by re various reviewers. Um, we, in planning, we agreed with many of them. In particular, the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the rerouting of the county rail trail seems appropriate. Um, however, the board might want to consider whether retaining the existing pedestrian connection as an amenity for the site and the future residential buildings that are in phase one. That was one of our comments for the board discussion. Uh, also for board discussion, the Historic Preservation Commission had some comments about the gazebo uh, relocation yep. as proposed uh, out of this phase and into a future phase and how that's handled. Uh, for the building I drive through, there's a number of questions. Um, and staff would remind the board that a drive through, the board can certainly consider the drive through elim being eliminated from one location does not obligate the board to approve a drive through in another location. On the original site plan, the board had, was very reluctantly allowed a fifth drive through. So the board may want to discuss that in the context of questions raised about the layout. Uh, by, by staff and by engineering, mm -hmm. uh, including with relation of the drive through to the property line. Uh, some questions regarding the queue arrange, queuing arrangement and access are also still up in the air. Um, then there's a few other miscellaneous questions on EV charges and lighting. Uh, some leftover comments from last time to which there were not answers like uh, the activation of the signal down at Route 9. Uh, some other things. So 
I, it's moving in the right direction is more than last time, but there's some discussion and questions that remain. Okay. Thanks, Eric. Uh, Andy, you have anything to say on this? Uh, um, well, I think Eric pretty much covered everything. Um, I, my questions pretty much mirror what Eric said. Um, I'm looking for some more information on the rail trail um, improvements along Hudson Heritage Drive and make sure that whatever the, the county is requiring is being incorporated into the plans. Um, I'm also looking for some uh, some some information on who's going to be responsible for maintaining that um, along um, along Hudson Heritage Drive. Um, I don't think that the town should be responsible for that. So um, those are that that's pretty much it. Alongside with you know with, with the comment about uh, the landfill and the long term maintenance of that that parcel and how that'll that'll work. Um, but that's that's a subdivision question, not a site plan question. So yeah, I saw that. Uh, I saw something about a ten year promise, but I don't know what happens in year eleven. Mm -hmm. So there's still yeah. some work to happen there right all right thanks Andy uh, I want to ask David to because David, David Cook yes, is on I, I saw David yeah can you on, can you want to share now Kyle sure hey, actually, actually, it's bigger. <laughs> actually if I may can I just or do you want, do you want to keep it the, okay Eric and uh, Eric and Andy remind me on a couple things so if I could just <laughs> touch on a couple things um, sorry David <laughs> uh, the gazebo um, had previously that was another change since the last time we were here so um, it was removed um, but there was some discussion about not just eliminating it but just moving it to another area of the site where it might make more sense um, so since that time we did locate it uh, we had proposed it in front of the in, uh, main administration building um, the historic commission had um, had an idea to potentially move it to the mer where the merry-go-round merry had been um, so that is you know we're okay with that so we're gonna we're gonna end up moving it um, again to to where the historic commission recommended um, yeah, I think can you point, I'm sorry to interrupt can you point out where that is uh, Kyle I'm not I have an exact location is. shown but I, it's like up in this general I area thought was, I thought it was a little more southwest like, is toward, it so toward, toward the rail trail it's 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 up in this okay. you know it's past the roundabout so I'll have to get a, an exact location so we can show it obviously okay. but um, but yeah all right so that's happening and then the um, the other thing I just wanted to touch on was the um, the comment about maintaining the five foot wide uh, sidewalk between lots one and six um, just for residents that was discussed when we talked to the county about the rail trail. And the issue with that is you're not going to be able to restrict it to just residents and you're going to have the county rail trail users using it like it's a 12 foot wide rail trail. So it's, it's just not going to be appropriate for the, the type of use that it's, that's going to get if it's there. Um, so that's why it was not considered to stay. Didn't that have stairs in it as well? Or did it this section had stairs, yeah. Okay. So the section directly out to lot six did not okay. um okay. but once this was taken out and then you know this didn't have any kind of real purpose anymore kyle this is mike if, if that uh, path were left there um and it was just for pedestrians though would it be it would be a problem if it's if it's not just residents but if it's other if users? it's there i mean bikes are going to use it um I mean, it's only yeah. it's only five foot wide sidewalk kind of thing for, versus uh, looking like a trail Right, it could be it could be you know signed and designed in a way that it's not it's not as you know um, attractive for a bicyclist. Um, but it's the shortest route, so a lot of people would consider that <laughs> the most attractive route, even mm -hmm. if it's not uh, you know appropriate. All right, you can see what the board members think. Go ahead. Any, any, is that it? Uh, I'll yes, that's it. All right, the, I can unchair now. <laughs> on the subject of route, there was one item I. I left out because it's not in my recommendation. Uh, the county, Matt Dukovich of uh, Public Works on behalf of the rail trail had commented and he basically said most of it's in phase two. Yes, uh, it, it subsequent is. to that though, uh, the county did point out the, the phase one element in this amendment is um, <clears throat> the, the ShopRite connector is still yes. there and there was some discussion about whether or not that path would be maintained at a minimum of 10 feet. Um, and I couldn't find the dimension on it on the plan, 
So I was just suggesting one of our one of our comments for the future would be to just verify that that the phase one connection between Shoprite and the rail trail mm -hmm. uh, is the minimum ten feet. Yeah, expect which that. it is, but we we okay, can add a label for that. All right, thanks. Great. Yeah, I expect that'll get a lot of use with the all the people living nearby. Uh, and then I think David yep, Cooper may have some information. Hanging out. Um, well, it was, uh, Mike, I was going to answer your question, although you didn't get a chance to, to ask it. I think I know what it is, but go ahead and I'll, I'll answer. Oh, mine? I, well, I, I yep. just thought you might want to talk a little bit about the, the landfill. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's okay. all. Yeah. So, so we, we did request more information uh, about the landfill, and just, just to fill in uh, uh, what we have. The, the landfill is, is subject to, or is part of a voluntary cleanup agreement with the DEC dating back to 2013, um, where remedial action occurred and now is really just subject to periodic monitoring to make sure that, to make sure that the remedial uh, measures are in place, so the engineering measures, and, and there's no more uh, discharge into to groundwater. Um, the, the, no, sorry, sorry uh, somebody I think needs to mute. But, yeah, um, I'm going to work on that. Hold on. Oh, there we go. Okay. The the uh, the applicant did provide the site management plan, which was which was approved by the DEC um, 2011, um, and which governs uh, the future maintenance and, and, and monitoring of the, the area. Um, the the concern I think that that's being raised by the board uh, and Kyle, just so, so you understand is uh, up until now the, the landfill was, was part of, of a larger site which had a clear owner and, and, and a clear use we're now creating you know i'd call it an orphan um uh parcel because now it's going to be split out from from lot four um and we understand for the board's benefit a uh, a corporation will be formed to take over the, the responsibility of managing uh or maintaining the the uh, the area and that's that's typical in, in a voluntary cleanup agreement situation that the voluntary cleanup agreement has uh, a provision which allows the owner to uh, convey or, 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 or um, uh, uh, change ownership um, subject to the, the obligations, the main, ongoing obligations to maintain and monitor and report back to the DEC. Um, in addition, this portion of, of the site is subject to a, a deed restriction. So there was a question, I think, at, at the site visit as to whether or not uh, future uses could occur here. They're, they're, they're fairly limited because of the deed restrictions. So for example, in, in, uh, commercial or, or uh, industrial uses can't, couldn't occur. And to the extent that there were other like residential uses, uh, they'd be limited because you can't, there wouldn't be much disturbance you could do to the soil without disturbing those um, the uh, the like uh, 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 the engineering controls. Um, that being said, I, I think to to really fill the, the the picture, so we understand what could happen in the future. Um, oh, one other piece. Sorry, um, somebody. I think Mr. Chairman, you, you mentioned the ten year um, guarantee. So what that is is actually th there's there's a ten year insurance policy that's covering. The, the, the site. So uh, if any claim were to would ever occur, the insurance policy of the insurance company would be there to, to defend the claim. That's a 10 year policy. So the question is, well, what happens after the 10 years? And so the, the question I have is, um, how much more monitoring do we believe uh, is going to be necessary until the DEC closes this out, if they, if they, ever, if they ever will? The, the monitoring plan from 2011 it doesn't indicate when they believe that it would, monitoring would no longer be necessary. So to the extent that there have been discussions with the DEC over the last you know, 10, 11 years that they may be headed towards a closeout, we would like to know so we can understand what the horizon is. Um, if it's beyond that 10 years, we, we should know. Um, the other question I, I have is what role will the master association play in, in monitoring or, or making sure that the owner of that site is, is complying with its obligations under the voluntary cleanup agreement. Um, because the master association agreement that we have was uh, assumed that that lot would, would be part of lot four. So um, to the extent that there are gonna be amendments to that master association, I'd like to see it so we can, we can review it and make sure it uh, uh, provides the, the, the proper 
uh, protections. Um, and then finally, there was a discussion with the board as to this, what we call it the belt and suspenders approach um, to make sure that, that there wouldn't be any obligation or liability on the town by creating this orphan lot that somehow the DC or anybody else could ever come back to the town and say, hey, you guys aren't doing your job of monitoring. Now, as a legal matter of law, um, there, there isn't much liability for the town, you know, reviewing, issuing permits and, and, and subdivision approvals does not uh, uh, turn you into an operator or an owner of a site such that you, you would be liable under the, the environmental conservation law. But I understand the, you know, it's a historic site and, and, and who knows what happened in the past, so belt and suspenders. We would like to see um, a, a uh, hold harmless and indemnity uh, agreement as part of this, the, the approval, um, so that it's clear in the record you know, the, the, the town does not have liability for uh, monitoring this, this location. All right, yeah, that, that's an important point, David. Once it's separated off, it's by itself there. All right, um, we're on for a public hearing, so I move we open the public hearing for this project. Second. Right. Moved and seconded. Call to question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 7-0. Is there anyone on the call wish to or in the room that wishes to comment on this application? We'll, uh, look for your hand. We'll look Zoom. for a hand raised or just unmute yourself. I did see Yvonne earlier, I thought, and I thought she had her hand raised, but at this moment I don't. Hi, I'm I'm here. Thank oh. you. Okay. Yep. Hi, Yvonne. Yeah. I was just gonna say that the location of the Mary Garam Pavilion is. Uh, uh, across from where the golf clubhouse is, between the golf clubhouse and the greenhouses. Just so you know. Okay. Okay. Thanks. That's it. Thank you. Thanks for the update. All right. Anyone else? I and mean, we'll have another chance. We're adjourning. Uh, Kyle, do you think uh, you know I could submit in time for May with all these? Things to look into, so probably June. Uh, with the the items that need to be coordinated, it's not looking like Monday, um, yeah. so it would be yeah. for for June. That's what I guessed. All right, I move we adjourn the public hearing to June sixteenth, two thousand and twenty-two. Second. Moved and seconded. Call to question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion passes six to zero. Uh, seven to zero. Sorry. All right. At this point, we'll go around the board for for comments. Uh, Peter, uh, <coughs> excuse me. I just have a, a couple of comments. One is uh, I brought this up at the last meeting. I want to be certain that the uh, crosswalk at uh, Quiet Cove and Hudson Heritage Lane is uh, signalized. Is yes, I, I checked that, and it is oh, it is okay. uh, signalized. Okay, thank you. And the other again with regard to the um, the landfill. Uh, you know, I can think of several different scenarios where the town could face ex exposure there, which I'm not going to share uh, in this setting, obviously, but I think it's something we have to look very carefully about. And also, uh, Mr. Cooper, have you shared this uh, prospect with uh, Jim Nelson, the town attorney, the landfill uh, proposal? The, which, uh, which prospect? The, the uh, the, uh, the, the creation of a separate parcel for the landfill. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've been in, in, in contact on, on various matters at Hudson Heritage, but I can go, go back and let him know. I mean, the, the issue of um, liability, Peter, is it, it's, it's fairly limited it just, just, by, just by, by you guys reviewing and creating a subdivision with that parcel when under the ECL trigger um, owner or, or operator liability for the town but yes it, it is on the radar and i can talk to jim about that as well i'm just saying forewarned yeah. is yeah. Uh, forearmed mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you Thanks, peter ben do you have anything the only thing i have is uh after reading this from the county planning about building i yep. i think a lot of work has to be done there with the staff of the town before we could do anything with it i yeah. think they got to yeah. work out a lot of stuff before yeah, those comments just came in, so they had they had uh, some ideas there. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to clarify one of the things um, in the county comments, Kyle. You mentioned that um, you know we were the board was concerned about the 
bypass last time in front of the building. I think if you read all the way down through the comments that were provided by the county, they provided a, uh, an example from Red Hook, which I, I admit I have not been to myself, but we were just looking at the aerial photo of it um, just a few minutes before the meeting. It, it's an interesting design idea for um, a drive-through like that. Um, it might be something you want to play around with, and we'd be happy to look at something, you know, interim if you uh, want to try to try to work on that. Um, I mean, yeah, the drive-through goes around the parking versus the building, so you still would not have a right. And like would, this, there wouldn't be a curb cut on Winslow Gate Road separate. They would just be using the curb cut uh, off the side street there. Yeah, you would essentially. We have two curb cuts. You'd essentially have the same two, and you wouldn't have the Winslow Gate curb cut, but you would have. Well, I didn't. I didn't get a chance to look at the Red Hook yeah, um, right, version, right. but I, I assume you would end up with. Uh, the drive-through lane right up against, um, you know, between the building and Winslow Gate. But I no, can. No, that's it, it. It stays on the back side of the building on the Red Hook example. So. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to look at the Red Hook example then, um, so we can we can uh, you know play with some options there. Yep. Thank you. Let's see if there's room for it. All right, uh, Nicole. Yeah. Um, I think that we should either do something like the Red Hook example. Um, you guys can look at later or just take away those two parking spots um, and then we were wondering uh, do you know where you're going to be putting any more uh, EV charge charging stations yet or no we're not currently planning to um, add any additional beyond the 12 that were uh, installed at ShopRite close to the residential buildings. Uh, that would just make more sense, I think. Uh, but, you know, what, whatever you decide to do. Yeah, that's definitely something to consider for residential. Um, they don't seem to get much use at ShopRite, which is unfortunate. As, a, as an EV driver myself, um, but uh, residential would probably be better utilized. So yeah. keep it in mind. They're most useful or somebody's going to be for a while if they're going out exactly. to dinner in a restaurant or a, but the, I mean, you have a lot of parking lot and, and the, the residential as well. So would it make sense, Kyle, to think about conduit in any of these places at this point? I mean, you know, where, where even if you're not ready to put chargers in, but, uh, you know, have you given any thought to you know, if you were going to in the future where they might make the most sense and maybe having conduit put in now while you're doing the work? Maybe. <laughs> Versus tearing up the road later. The so the, road. I mean, the electrical layout's not actually on, on the site plans. Um, so it's not, it's not something we've considered as far as the site plan goes. Um, but that, you know, it's, a, it, it's something that, uh, you know, they, sh they should definitely keep in mind. Yep, uh, all the companies are coming out with them, so it's they're going to become more prevalent, I'd say. Anything else, Nicole? No. Uh, Ahmad? I, uh, you have to move your microphone down. Oh. Yep. I echo the same comments about the building eye and that we have to look closely at it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the landfill. Yep. So you would lose a well, I guess you wouldn't necessarily. They don't have a bypass lane in Red Hook. If that's, I don't know if that would be acceptable to the the planning board or to the tenant. Yeah, it's something to look at. It uh, goes around the parking. Uh, Steve, uh, no additional comment. And Joan, I have no additional comments. All right. Uh, my two cents, uh, yeah, I think it's something worth at least exploring, Kyle, for the building eye there, what the county said. It just came in late, so we haven't had a try chance to really study it. Right. Uh, the, uh, and the gazebo location that where the carousel, that I appreciate you looking at doing that, working with, uh, continuing to work with Yvonne on the historical issues. And uh, I guess I would also try to work, see if you can work with the department on what, you know, maybe keeping that five foot connection 
I know you're concerned about it uh, getting used incorrectly, but maybe there's a way that can be worked on for the benefits of the residents there. That was in the county recommendation too, so I think, oh. although I'd have to read it again to know if that was a condition. Was it a condition? Yeah, the, the planning yeah. board, the no. county planning board did issue a, a recommendation that would require a supermajority of the board to override. Okay. All right, so. So there may be design ways to keep said. bikes off of there, you know. Um, there's some, well, I can think of some ideas which I, we can share. Just uh, make, make it out of cobblestone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, take a look at that. Yeah, the county co county's comments, I guess you have to pay more attention to right now because of the, the recommendation. So that's it for now. I move the planning board for further action on this application, <coughs> subject to the following. Respond in writing to comments of the planning board on, no, on all comments received from town departments and agencies. Said responses to be reviewed by the planning department as to adequacy and completeness included up and not limited to the following one through 14. Second. Moved and seconded. Called the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 7 0. All right, we'll see you next time. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night. Thanks, Carl. You too. <coughs> Excuse me. Next up is uh, Diamond Point self storage. <coughs> Good evening, Mr. Chairman. This is uh, Christopher Lapine with LaBella Associates representing the applicant, Diamond Point Properties. With uh, me tonight, uh, we also have their counsel, Nicholas Ward Willis, and our clients, both Jason and Aaron Summers. Thank you. Good evening. This is uh, Nicholas Ward Willis. We're also joined with our project architects, Scott Steinard and Brandon Arroyo from Steinard Architecture. Mr. Chairman, when we were last before your meeting in December, um, we made a, a presentation memo to the Zoning Board of Appeals. This is a public hearing for a special permit and site plan approval for a self-storage facility on a 2.03 acre property located at 1998 um, South Road. The site is a former OSHA restaurant and our client proposes to demolish that building and construct a new uh, self-storage facility with 650 units and approximately 95,000 gross area square feet with two living spaces and nine parking spaces along with associated landscaping and lighting. And before I turn this over to Chris to sort of walk the board back through the site plan, I want to give you a brief overview of our visit, if you will, with the Zoning Board of Appeals, where we, you may recall, we had uh, presented and proposed a height variance for both stories and height. That remains with a 10-foot height variance and a one-story variance. We did, when we were before the ZBA, spoken about before story having a setback so we're now proposing a 26 foot setback on that fourth story which my words and the minutes would reflect this was favorably received by the zoning board of appeals and they were pleased with that and the graphics and the architectural design that we proposed showing the stepped back approach on that fourth story um, additionally we eliminated the need for a rear yard setback that is no longer required um, impervious surface coverage um, remains 0.1% less than what um, is presently existing. With respect to the lot coverage, based upon comments received from the ZBA in terms of the design of the building, as well as from the fire department and the request for additional access, we require now a 4% lot coverage variance um, where 25% is permitted, we're proposing 29% coverage. So while we've eliminated one variance request for the rear yard, We've added one for the lot coverage as a result of design considerations um, from the planning zoning board and from the uh, fire department. So we still require the variances for the height, the parking, and now one for uh, lot coverage. And we're on tonight for, this, for the uh, public hearing for the site plan and the special use permit. And if the board makes its secret determination, then we would go back to the zoning board for final consideration of the variances that have been requested, uh, hopefully at their meeting in, in May. And at this point, I'd like to turn the presentation over to Chris to walk the board through some of the site plan changes we've made and modifications to the plan since we last appeared before you. All right, go ahead and share screen. And Thank you, Nick. I'm going to share my screen if I may. All right. So um, we will be 
before the board in uh, December, we had some really great feedback uh, that we took uh, great notes on, particularly uh, Nicole and Peter uh, had a, a great idea of eliminating the access drive along the frontage of the building that proceeded north and uh, its point of egress was pretty close to the ingress of uh, Chestnut Plaza. Um, we took that information in hand and went and reached out to the DOT and they were in agreement uh, that this that was a great stratagem uh, towards securing their approval. Uh, so I, I commend the both of you for your input on that. Um, what we weren't able to completely do and I can get, I'll get into details a little bit more, was completely eliminate the access along the front. Uh, our office worked uh, with George Finn during the months of February and March uh, in addressing his concerns with vehicular circulation and uh, fire access and staging uh, for the site because it has a difference in three and four story uh, articulation uh, from the vertical perspective. Um, what uh, George Finn desired was on the eastern section of the, of the site where we do have four stories, he requested that we have an access drive that goes uh, completely to almost the northern property line, at least alongside of the building. We've maintained that to meet the 15 to 30 foot setback uh, from all potential staging areas uh, along the eastern side of our building. Uh, the striping that you see on our plan uh, along the eastern side was all requested uh, by George Finn. Um, he also requested that we add an additional hydrant uh, on this portion of our site, on the uh, western side, I'm sorry, on the eastern side, which is shown on our plans. With regards to the western side of the site, um, George still wanted to have some sort of access along the frontage so that he could get a ladder truck in this location to get to this third story. Um, what we were able to compromise on because this is a fully sprinkler building was that the distance would be limited to 150 feet uh, from the intersection here to the end. Uh, he asked that we put a no parking and I, I believe there were some concerns about why do we have striping in this particular location. Uh, George just asked that we place it there just as further notice that you shouldn't proceed beyond this point. Um, George also asked uh, that we provide him various uh, turning radiuses, not only internal to our site, but he said that in the event uh, that a uh, emergency vehicle was to be traveling from north to south along Route 9, he wanted to see if, and it's included in our package, if a fire truck could turn over the median in between uh, the two islands, which I'm at right here, yeah. and make the way into our site. Mm -hmm. uh, we've provided that information to George. Um, based on the feedback uh, that I think the board has seen, uh, George is satisfied uh, that we have met all his uh, concerns as it related to emergency access. What this did give us the opportunity, which the board also uh, picked up upon and we shared it with the ZBA was it gave us the opportunity to turn some of this area into greenscape and add some uh, trees that would provide some further screening uh, along the frontage of our site. So the ZBA was uh, was pleased with the uh, direction of the planning board and our ability to implement it with the DOT. Um, we did have to make some obviously tweaks to the configuration of the building based upon some of the feedback of the ZBA and, and altering the, uh, the footprint so that we have kind of almost an equalized uh, uh, internal storage because with all these nooks, there's a lot of lost efficiencies and also the fact that they're gonna have two access points, the one that gets to the third floor and one to get to the fourth floor. So that, that was a result of our kind of our configuration there. Um, we've provided a stormwater pollution prevention plan as part of this project as well. We're utilizing a combination of storage on the northern portion of the site, which is a depression, and we have some underground storage beneath the fire access lane, and that all ties back into the existing DOT catch basin uh, located in the northwest corner of the site. Uh, there were some notes that we were asked to place on our plans in terms of uh, regarding refuse, uh, 
as we discussed at the uh, last time, where this is a take-in, take-out type facility, they usually operate with only a, uh, a 55 gallon drum container, similar to what we do at our at our homes and dwellings. That uh, uh, they, the local company comes and picks up. It's all purely for purely for office use. Uh, some of the other modifications we made was we modified the store line as requested uh, by the town engineer. Well, we made sure to have a, a decent landscaping screening along the eastern portion of this property as well uh, in the event that the property to the east gets developed. And we've also, um, in addition to the uh, stormwater pollution prevention plan, we updated our EAF to uh, reflect the site plan changes that I've uh, just uh, discussed with everybody here right now. And we did label all the radiuses uh, for our curves uh, on the site that was requested. And what else did we do here? Um, we kind of coordinated, there's a few details that weren't coordinated as well on our submission in December that we've since uh, rectified. Uh, so if I may, um, I'd like to turn it over to um, the architect, but actually before I do that, I do want to, uh, uh, kind of go over with you guys again. Um, there was a concern at the December meeting about uh, nine spaces for a facility of this size. Yep. Uh, I'd like to uh, make the board feel comfortable with the spaces that we have here. As we indicated at December, uh, uh, our client has a number of these facilities. Uh, and if they need more parking, they certainly would be asking for more parking they wouldn't want to be requesting parking that's going to impact impact their development. So what we did, and uh, we thought it would be helpful, and I'm going to turn towards a, uh, uh, if you can all see this word document that I have here. Uh, yes. yes. We, we've given them six, they've got five current facilities. They have one here in uh, Poughkeepsie that were before you for, we also have another one in Ulster that's not actually on here, but we want to give you a breakdown of the size of the facilities and the number of parking spaces that they currently operate with. In Fayetteville, Georgia, they have a 107,000 square foot facility, 735 units. They have six parking spaces. In Schenectady, New York, they have a 105,000 square foot facility, 767 units, 11 spaces. Marietta, Georgia, 104,000 square feet, 761 units, nine spaces. Portland, Maine, 90,000 square feet, 694 units, six spaces. Here in Poughkeepsie, we have 95,339 square feet, 650 units, nine spaces being proposed that are delimited. We also have a loading area uh, at this particular facility that theoretically could be recognized as a 10th space. So we, we, we did one more step uh, as well, and we took a look at uh, two of their daily counts in terms of the number of parking spaces uh, or visits that occur during the course of the day. Marietta, Georgia, we just used the recent counts for March through uh, March 1st through March 31st. Uh, uh, and, the, and the trips fluctuated between anywhere from uh, as low as uh, eight per day uh, up to 35 in a day. But on average, for the entire course of the month, they averaged 15 spaces. Uh, and this is a facility, uh, 15 visits a day. And this is for a facility that is open between the hours of 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. in the evening. So if, if you think about it from that perspective, over, you know, nine hours of operation and they're averaging 15 cars uh, during the course of the day, um, very, very rarely do they occupy all their parking spaces on site. Um, I think uh, at the one point uh, for the Marietta where they had 35 it was, um, the most they had at any one point in time during that course of the day was six cars there. And that was their peak day of the month at, at one point. Um, we also looked at their Woodstock uh, Georgia facility. facility. Once again, they're averaging at this place 14 visits a day. Uh, and they do, they furthermore at these particular facilities where they have more than 20 tenant visits, uh, they take a look at 
when it's occurring and how many parking spaces are being utilized. At no point did they have more than 20 where five spaces were being used uh, during the course of the month of, of January. So the parking is something that's not taken lightly, uh, but from the perspective of the client um, and their current operations of their five other facilities, they have a very strong hold and study of how active their parking is and how much parking they need for these facilities. And I'm hoping that some of the counts that we've provided here uh, can make the planning board feel a little bit more at ease with what's being proposed. Uh, I think we can all agree uh, for the sake of having additional impervious area, uh, all that's going to do is uh, increase the amount of runoff on the site and generate a larger detention system and take away from uh, the green space that we're trying to preserve on this property. So with that being said, I'm gonna turn it over to the architect to walk through uh, the revised elevations. And Scott, I do have them on my screen and I'll, I'll share them. Okay. Hey, thanks, Chris. So the, the rest of the, the uh, south elevation up right now, Scott. Okay, this is uh, Brandon here, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, hello, this is uh, Brandon Royal, I'm an architecture and the uh, architects on this project. Uh, I'm just going to quickly briefly talk about some of the concerns um, the board had, uh, mostly in relationship to a flat roof and the facade of the facility. Um, in terms of the flat roof, uh, if you look at the front elevation, we try to mitigate that roof by having a step in the parapets. And so those varying heights create a sense of uh, separation between the facade, um, breaking that facade up, which was one of the concerns of the uh, whole. Um, in terms of the flat roof itself, in, in a facility this long, we can't have a pitched roof of even one to 12 that would have such a height. Uh, especially on the project where we're trying to have a height limit on this project. Um, so we're trying to use a flat roof, which we use in all of our facilities. Um, and in terms of the south, as you said, not only the difference in parapet heights, but also stepping in and out the side creates a sense of uh, separation. And also using things like light and dark colors to create foreground and background also helps to break up that facade. Um, and then the inclusion of the uh, third story in the front half on the street has a lot shorter view range. And as you can see on the south elevation, that helps to really kind of break up that facade as well, even on the south and what ultimately would be the north elevation. Um, so those are the changes that we made since the last meeting. So if you have any other questions, let me know. All right, thanks. The, uh board members will discuss it i'm sure the, uh, mm -hmm. the step back was was a good uh, good progress toward it I th although i think you know looking at the north side you know you, the south side there on the back uh, i don't know if you could do windows similar to the north side on the, on the back there if you're, uh, mr chairman you're referring to the on the eastern elevation uh, well, well that too but the the, the uh, back of the south southern elevation is all blank okay. as well. Mm -hmm. That does have a lot of steps in it as well because of all those tall trees in the back. Okay. Really yeah, I, I think what you're looking at here, uh, Mr. Chairman, is here is the front where they have the windows. Ah, got it, got it. And as you come back further, we have all these steps in here. Elevation. Which I don't think are going to be quite visible from the line. Nope, that's the elevation, the tricky, trickery of the eyes. Yeah. Gotcha. But the yeah, the back is as you said that nine part nine acre parcel behind there may be developed and uh, as business highway mm -hmm. and uh, have to take a look at that I guess also. All right, All right. thank you. Thanks for Chris. Do you want to share the renderings as well? Uh, that's what I'm showing right now. The renderings. I think it means the three one. Yeah, those are the elevations, but we've got the, the renderings. I can share mine if you don't have okay. any. Do you have a 3D rendering? That would, that would be helpful. Yeah, you guys had prepared those for the ZBA meeting, right? Sure. They, they were pretty helpful. 
All right, I'll stop sharing and allow you to uh, share. Aaron. Okay, thanks. Let's see if I can do this now. There we go. Uh. Okay, tell me if you can see my screen there. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that's okay. good. Got it. That's cool. You can zoom out a little bit. Well, I'm just going to now. Let's see. So that's, so that's the view from the street going by. Let's see where the other views are. Yeah, that puts in better perspective. It's really working on that one. Uh, that was developed prior to us finalizing with George Finn. Uh, the length of the driveway along the front of the building, as you can see from what we submitted, yeah. uh, we're to reduce that uh, yep. distance. Yeah, there we go. Yep. Okay, now I see what you mean by the back side. I stepped back in there. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good view. You can see it from that angle. All right. Thank you. Sure. I think this was the, was the same view. That's the, the uh, coming from the, from the north. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the entrance to the uh, chilies there. Yeah. That's with the trees faded out. And then I think, did you have one with the trees in? I don't have that one handy, actually. You do have another version of that, Jason. I don't know if you had it, but That's okay. the idea is that we're, you know, a lot of the trees that are there currently, we're going we're gonna to keep and add more. But you couldn't, when we had the trees up there, you can't see the building, so we kind of shadowed it so you could see through it. You know? yep. yep. Okay. Got it. Okay. All right. Thanks for the presentation. Sure. Um, Kristen. Okay. Thank you. That was quite a thorough overview. Makes my job a lot easier. Uh, so the applicant, as they noted, was lost before the planning board in December last year. So uh, this is their first appearance this year. Um, they are on for a public hearing, seeker review for an unlisted action. The planning board actually had uh, declared its intent to be the agency back in December and to date no objections have been received. They are on for a special use permit review, site plan review, and architectural review. Um, uh, as far as special use permit review goes, staff had reviewed the application um, and uh, it appears that you know there might be some slight uh, the foot candles might exceed what's written up in the town code, but again, staff feels that we can work with the applicant and get that where it needs to be. Um, there will be a, a, an area variance, as we <laughs> heard this evening, uh, required uh, for the parking count, um, though the, the applicant did provide um, additional information to talk you through that. Uh, I do have a couple of other site plan related comments still outstanding, um, but I think we are, we've made um, a lot of progress. Uh, Mark Petraro is on the line uh, from JMC to talk through any traffic related items mm -hmm. and of course Andy Learn um, reviewed on behalf of the engineering department. Um, so tonight uh, before you the planning board could uh, act to open the public hearing, adjourn it, adopt seeker and defer action. Um, this would allow the applicant to go back to the ZBA um, and, and make yep. their case for their area, area variances. Um, uh, there is a drop negative declaration in your packet. I will point out um, there was some missing information as it related to the animal species that were listed. Um, unfortunately, the mapper that I utilized for consultation or um, preliminary consultation purposes was down. Either that or my computer just had an off day. Um, <laughs> so I will have to just uh, go back in and populate that. Um, but we'll, again, that's in draft format, but we can, we can do that subsequent to this. It shouldn't have any direct impact yep. um, so the the board could consider that and then defer action on the site plan and special use permit and architectural so if you have specific items related to site plan or architectural style as long as they don't implicate any of the area variances currently out mm -hmm. there um, the applicant can go forth to ZBA and and get their area variances and then come back to you for the final yeah. reviews so for the rest of the application Sounds good. We'll see what the board members think, feel. And uh, I guess I should also just point out too, uh, because again, the timing, uh, we did receive county comments. Um, it was local concern with comments. There's no requirement for majority vote. Um, I do think the applicant has actually addressed a number of those comments already. Uh, and I know that um, there was discussion about potentially including a sidewalk along Route 9. Um, so I, I'll leave that to you guys to uh, discuss mm -hmm. with the applicant. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, there's some issues there along Route 9, but we'll 
Uh, with, 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 would I be able just to show during the conversation I had with the DOT uh, as we spoke to them about the elimination of the drive on the uh, north portion? Um, uh, the DOT, who uh, typically uh, is uh, a proponent of always uh, trying to get uh, sidewalks incorporated into a project, um, really amazed me on this one where they didn't think the uh, sidewalk would be advantageous in this particular location. Uh, for a number of reasons. One is uh, due to the uh, rock removal that would be necessary uh, within the right of way to accommodate it. Uh, also, uh, due to the ability to uh, meet ADA accessibility standards. Um, and the other concern they had was, and, 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 I sh and they saw from our mapping, is there are two underground uh, shallow force means uh, located within the uh, right of way there. It's a very small right away uh, along that corridor. Um, and the impact of placing a sidewalk on top of that in the event that someone ever needed to maintain them, they run the length of the, uh, the property. Uh, the DOT's opinion is uh, that they, they feel in the future the best location for a sidewalk would be on the opposite side of Route 9, where the uh, topography is not as uh, rocky, uh, it's steep. Uh, they have a greater right of way. Uh, on the, on the uh, west side of uh, Route 9. Um, and that was their uh, their input. Uh, they were, you know, I shared with them the uh, potential of running a sidewalk through the site. That's not something uh, they were enthused about uh, because of uh, the necessary easements that are involved for the public to come through your property and apartments. Um, so I just yeah. share that with the board based on our, our meeting with the DOT. Yep, thanks, Chris. Unfortunately, DOT is the one responsible for taking away all that land in front when they widened Route 9, so. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, uh, Andy, go to you next. I don't really have a whole lot to add. Um, you know, Chris and his team did a nice job of addressing most of my comments. Um, I have a few comments remaining about uh, some notes, like Chris said, um, and a few minor things about stormwater. But otherwise, um, I, the plans are in pretty good shape. So. All right. Okay. So, thanks, Andy, and Mark. Uh, what do you say about parking and other traffic issues? Yeah, so I don't have many comments as uh, Andy had stated too. Um, pleased to see that the northern driveway was being eliminated. Um, did have some minor technical comments in there. Um, I did see a minor discrepancy with one of the trips that were calculated in the morning time period, but it was a minor discrepancy. And I believe Chris went over about one of my comments about the stop bar that seemed out of place, but that was related to what George has requested, so that uh, He'll supersede my comment on that one. Uh, but the other ones are just very minor in nature. All right. Yep, and he, he explained the stop bar issue there. Great, thanks. Uh, this is on for public hearing, so I move we open the public hearing. Second. Moved and seconded. Call to question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 7 to 0. Is there anyone on the call or in the audience here that wishes to comment on this application? Raise your hand on Zoom or just open your mic and speak up. Or in the worst case scenario, you can just wave frantically. <laughs> if you have the video up. Yeah, that's right. No one else has video up. I'm not seeing anybody looking to. There will be another opportunity. So at this point, I move we adjourn the public hearing to June 16, 2022. Second. Moved and seconded. Call to question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 7 to 0. We'll go around the board for comments on this. This time, uh, start with Joan. Uh, I would just like to thank the applicant for the rendering. Uh, it was very helpful and also for working with uh, DOT to improve the ingress and egress. That was a big improvement. Um, I would like to see the east side of the building dressed up a little bit, if possible. I think Carl's point is, is you know, relevant that it won't always be just a wooded lot behind there. So to the extent you could kind of dress that up. Um, with respect to the flat roof, I think that the way the building is designed and the, the, the um, accents on the building help to compensate for the flat roof. Um, actually, and that's it. Thanks, Joe. Steve? 
Yeah, yeah, just one comment. I, I appreciate on the uh, front fire access reducing that space. I still think that's a concern in vehicles trying to back out. So I, again, I'm all for minimizing that front as much as possible. Yep. And I'm at comments at this time. Nicole? Uh, yeah, I don't really have any comments. I think we've, uh, we're have we starting to see a lot of these um, self-storage uh, places coming forward. And we're starting to learn that um, there's less parking needed. So I don't think that the nine parking sp spaces is going to be a problem. Um, I think there's other board members that share that same opinion. So that's all I have to say. Thanks. Thank you. And Ben? Any just uh, in regard to the parking, that chart was nice that you showed. It was good to see what other places have, but other places have to comply with their town codes. We're concerned with the town of Poughkeepsie town parking codes, so that's what we have to adhere to. And if nine is sufficient with them, it's okay with me. Uh, Peter? Uh, Carl, I share your concern about the east elevation. Uh, you know, all facades that face a street, parking lot, or public area shall have windows. And of course, currently the lot uh, adjacent to them is vacant, but at some time, you know, yep. it's a large, it will be it's a, developed. It's a large commercial lot, so. So I think you're going to have to come up with some idea for the east elevation on that building that will, I'm not sure necessarily have to be windows, could be full windows, but something's added that's right. going to have to be done to address that east elevation. Yeah, I mean, there were some, I think the Walgreens used some full windows just in the plaza next to you there uh, for one of their issues. Uh, anything else, Peter? No. So I guess that's my comment as well, the, the architecture. I, I liked what you've done with the step back and, and that 3D rendering really helped uh, us visualize it a lot more than just the elevations. so I appreciate that. Um, as well as the parking layout, parking, uh, if that's what you think your business can deal with, then that's what we do. I'm glad, glad there's no more exit onto Route 9 at the north end of this site because that was always a site distance problem once Route 9 was widened. It was a pre-existing condition, but then that got ruined. Uh, what else did I have? Yeah, sidewalk, I mean, DOT is on the kick that sidewalk has to be in the right of way if we have one at all. We have quite a few sidewalks along Route 9 that are not in the right of way that are used quite a bit, including the, I'm not sure if it's all in the right of way, the one in front of Chili's there. I think it's not, but uh, I personally have walked to Osho using that one and when it was there, and, but it is difficult terrain there as I understand, so I'm not sure. Any of the board members are pushing to push, push that sidewalk issue in that it's in that area. Well, Mr. Chairman, if I may remind you, uh, the, the board, uh, when they reviewed the adjoining Chestnut Plaza, you did create an access easement uh, between the two parcels that could be utilized for both vehicular and pedestrian access. That is on the eastern portion of the uh, Chestnut Plaza property. Uh, yes, where the, where the topography slopes down by the uh, by the men's warehouse there, I think. Correct. You guys had envisioned that as a, a future connection between the two parcels to try to minimize the amount of traffic onto uh, Route 9, uh, and that would lend itself to an opportunity for a pedestrian connection uh, with the uh, Chestnut Plaza uh, property. Yep, thanks for that reminder, Chris. I know you were instrumental in the design of that project as well. All right, uh, so I think we're good for now. We've got our notes on you know the architecture a little bit more. Oh, I had a question on the HVAC. Is the HVAC on the ground or on the roof for that building? Uh, we we uh, placed the HVAC in the rear of the facility on the uh, east side. Okay. It's not perfect. So we don't have to worry about it showing on the roof, just screened with uh, you are the correct. landscaping. Would, would we be able to get one clarification on Steve's comments about minimizing uh, is it the width of the fire access lane in front? Is that what you said, Steve? I was just taking notes. I'm not sure I got the right. No, no, mine was more on the length to minimize as much as possible because it's a tough area to back out of. All right. 
we'll, we'll, we'll talk to George Finnegan uh, on that. Yeah, it's a lot of extra pavement just for the, the fire, but uh, I don't know what type, or if it can be a per permeable, permeable material of some sort. But. Yeah, I think part of that is prescribed by fire code access, so they have to have a certain length around, I think, three sides of the building, um, something like that. So, yeah, the, yeah, that might already have been accounted for in the design. Yeah, we're, we're, we're right at our, our threshold, but uh, I can have further dialogue with George on it. And it's the height of the building that comes into play there, I yeah. think, is the issue. Too. Correct. It's three stories on that side. And four on, four on the back, yeah. And four on the back. Correct. All right. Thanks, Chris. We'll see you again in June, but let's go through our motions first. I move that the planning board determine that the proposed Diamond Point development self-storage application would not have a significant adverse impact on the environment. For the reason set forth in the secret negative declaration for an unlisted action dated April 21st, 2022. I second. Moved and seconded. Call to question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 7 to 0. I move that the planning board defer further action on this application and direct the applicant to respond to comments and writing of the planning board and those received from town departments and agencies, including but not limited to the following 1 through 12. Second. Moved and seconded to defer. Call to question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes, 7 to 0. Good luck with the ZBA, and uh, we'll see you back here in June. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is store space number number two. Who's on here representing store space? Good evening. This is Mike Ritchie from Costage Engineering. Uh, also with me tonight is Sabrina Pernolette from Star Space and Gretchen Elton, the project architect. Um, if I could share my screen. Yep. Here. Can everybody see that? Uh, it's coming up. There we go. Yep, we yep. got it now. Okay. Uh, well, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the board for taking time to speak with us tonight. We were last in front of this board uh, a month ago for the March meeting. Uh, we uh, did receive comments from town staff uh, as well as uh, county staff. Um, based on uh, town comments, we have uh, made some revisions to the plans, minor as they may be. Um, we've, uh, based on input from the planning board, we've proposed to extend the sidewalk southwest to connect into the existing sidewalk uh, off the property. Um, and the, the next submission will show that uh, we were just needing to get some additional topography information to show that on an updated site plan. Um, we did receive uh, some input from the, the last public hearing. Uh, I believe the resident who, uh, who lives adjacent to the property I had a couple concerns, uh, one being uh, the location of the dumpster enclosure. I apologize, it's not shown on the landscape plan. But based on that input, uh, it was previously shown Excuse me. It was previously shown uh, in this area uh, at the the northeastern corner of the site, um, and we have oops, sorry one more sheet up. We have proposed to relocate it uh, to the uh, other side of the building, further from the, the view of the resident. Uh, additionally, let me go back to the landscaping plan. Sorry if I'm moving sheets too rapidly, but that's all right. Um, we, we have added some additional landscaping along the residential portion, uh, as well as uh, we went back and looked at the grading plan. There are a couple fairly large existing trees. Uh, we were able to adjust the grading to, to keep those trees uh, intact through construction. Um, so those are the major comments we received from the public at that meeting. Um, there, you know, there were comments received by town staff. Uh, we had uh, revised the plan uh, accordingly. There weren't a, a bunch of major issues uh, related from uh, site plan comments. Um, we did receive comments from the planning board um, regarding the, the building architecture. Um, so we worked with the project architect and made some, some tweaks to the, the building elevation and Gretchen, if you can, uh, be able to speak to the changes that were made to the building elevation since our last meeting? Sure. Um, the 
main comment that we received at our meeting last was that we wanted to reduce the amount of red. We changed the corners of the building, um, which were previously red, to a fiber cement wood look panel. Um, do you have the rendering? Uh, I do not believe I have the most current rendering. If, if you have that, could you share that? Yeah, I sure do. Hang on one second. Um, this might show it a little bit cleaner. And also, you know, in your presentation, you know, note where the HVAC is and make sure that's hidden. That's sure part of our course. Um, so, if you can see this, where I'm highlighting here, um, this is sort of a wood look panelized system. Um, so it will appear like sort of whitewashed or uh, graywashed um, wood in the end. Um, but it'll be a nice durable product that will never sort of peel or flake or need to be repainted or anything like that. All right. It's, it's, it's a big building. We have to. Mm -hmm. And the HVAC, you said, uh, where is that going to go? Um, the HVAC is on the roof and it'll be behind the parapet walls. Yeah, we don't want that visible. Um, not a lot. Right. Of, not a lot of windows. But, uh, we'll we'll go around the board and have you know the board members will have their <coughs> turn at architecture when we get to that. Mm -hmm. So let, for now. Uh, okay. For now. I'll stop sharing my screen. Mike, you can take back control. Sure. Anything further, Mike? Or. Uh, no, I, you know, I think we touched on a lot of the major yep. issues. I, I will say that I'll thank Kristen Taylor. We've been in uh, communication with her uh, quite regularly. And she, she suggested that we reach out to both the city of Poughkeepsie as well as the Dutchess County DPW uh, to confirm uh, that they have no uh, additional comments on the site plan application. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm pleased to say that we were able to get some email correspondence uh, from both of those parties uh, stating that uh, the plans that we've previously submitted uh, address their, their comments. So from that perspective, um, I believe we've, we've satisfied the, the neighbor to the south being the city and the, uh, the, the county DPW. Um, so again, I'll just rehash. You know, we, we did get a comment letter earlier this week. It was technical in nature, um, and I don't think it really uh, drastically impacts the site plan that you see in front of you. Um, so we are uh, asking if the board is comfortable uh, that they could act on Seeker so that we could go to the zoning board next month uh, to try to obtain a couple area variances before coming back in front of this board. So I'd be happy to answer any comments the board has. Thanks for sharing that, Mike. And I'm glad you moved the, uh, the, the trash receptacle you know, away from the residential and threw in more landscaping there. Uh, Kristen? I was going to let Ben present. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you uh, for the. Okay. All right. I'll handle this one. Uh, so this is on for a public hearing. Um, so staff is uh, recommending that the board um, open the public hearing um, and adjourn it at this time. Uh, as the applicant indicated, they'll have to go to the ZBA if the zoning or the planning board chooses to act on seeker this evening. Uh, they might be able to go ahead and make that next step. Um, so it's on, again, seeker review for a type one action. Um, they de you declared your lead agency intent um, in January and circulated your intent um, to interested and involved agencies. To date, no objections were heard. Um, and then, uh, as Mike indicated, there were consultation, you know, had been recommended and encouraged along the way, um, and they've gone ahead and done so. So I think that they're sort of checking those boxes and working with all interested parties. Um, as this project moves along. Um, in terms of special use permit review, it appears the applicant is adhering to the town, town code language. We appreciate that, although I don't expect an answer right this second, but um, I think the planning board might be interested in learning what the interior lighting might look like. Uh, we had had a little bit of conversation about that at the last uh, appearance. Um, for the second criteria, it's, it's a, it relates to parking, um, and uh, so 
the applicant is aware and, and the planning board was made aware last time that the applicant would be going to the ZBA for an area variance for the number of parking spaces. Um, it is also on for special use permit review and site plan review and architectural review. Um, they have been working diligently to clean up a number of the uh, site plan comments. Um, so staff at this point would um, feel comfortable from a planning department perspective um, with, the, with the board moving forward with seeker and deferring action on the rest of the application. Um, of course, pending uh, hearing any additional public comment that might uh, change that. <laughs> yep. And then, um, you know, uh, Andy, of course, is on the line and reviewed the application for the, the uh, engineering department. But there is a draft negative declaration included in your packet uh, should you choose to act on Seeker this evening. All right. Thanks, Kristen. I guess the only other item, um, and I'm not sure, Mike, you might have hit on this. Um, I've had so many conversations with you about this over the past month. Um, but just uh, what your intentions were, because when this application first came to the planning board, the intention was to merge all three parcels. Um, I think there, we've so, sort of gone away from that, but you would, your intent would be looking to merge the parcels held within the town of Poughkeepsie, um, as the project has now moved solely outside of the sidewalk along Violet Avenue, um, has moved into the town. Yeah, at a, at a minimum, our intent would be to combine the two parcels in the town of Poughkeepsie. and. Uh, I recently reached out to the town assessor based on your recommendation, uh, as well as the county. Um, we'll continue to coordinate with them. If the uh, city of Poughkeepsie uh, doesn't have an issue with it, I think preferably we'd prefer to combine all three parcels into one parcel. Yeah. Um, but we're, uh, we're looking to work through that process and we'll uh, update you, Kristen, and the board as well uh, once we get more information. Absolutely, and that's, I mean, just for the board's benefit, that is something that we would require before signing any plans that yeah. would all have oh, to sure. be taken care of and filed accordingly. I mean, so. it, if you, you know, that, I think if you don't combine that city lot, you've got some setback issues there uh, mm -hmm. from the parcel line. So, so including, the, including the city lot there, that corner is less, well, they're, less they're, susceptible. Yeah, yeah. So, the, yeah. So does it, <laughs> maybe, maybe more favorable to, to the ZBA, just just a thought. Mm -hmm. One parcel. All right, uh, Andy, I know there were some drainage issues at one point. Uh, what do we got left? Uh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad to hear that the county um, has uh, essentially approved the plans. That was one of my big concerns because a lot of this drainage is going straight to the um, to the rail trail system. Um, so that's good that's good that's a good indication that things are going well um we also have the uh dot uh drainage uh piping that's going through the site they are showing an easement for that we will want to see that um filed um you know obviously to in, with the county clerk to make sure that that's um finalized uh <clears throat> Aside from that, um, there's some kind of technical things with respect to water meter pit details and things of that nature. Um, I did have some questions about the truck turnaround and truck turn movements for the fire department. Um, I, I will defer to them, you know, in terms of what they want. Um, so if they're okay with the way that it is, that's fine with me. I just want to make sure. Um, and then I did notice there is a, an, um, a, a very slight encroachment um, with the, the grading um, on the northern property line that that may just be a uh, straight line, um, but we should make sure that that's not shown crossing the property line. Otherwise, um, that's that's about it. All right. Thanks, Andy. So sounds like we're you're okay with with going forward with Seeker. Yes. All right. Uh, Sound for public hearing, so I move we open the public hearing for this project. Uh, second. Moved and seconded. Call to question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 7 0. Is there anyone wish to speak on this project? I know we had, had a neighbor last time and we tried to address those issues. I have a very quick question. Uh, yep, state your, state your name and, and your comment. Hi, this, hi, this is Michelle. Listen, I, I tuned in rather late and I did note a storage, um, a storage um, facility that was uh, in the process of being considered. Uh, is this also a storage facility? I just 
tuned in just now. Oh, yes, this is another storage facility up on Park Road. Okay. All right, so it's relevant. Um, I'm not sure if the board had, had read one of my older emails, but um, I noticed that uh, there is a trend now because people are so economically compromised out there that uh, they use storage facilities as temporary housing. So it's kind of a, a whacked idea. However, you know, people who are very desperate, that's what they do until they can find housing. So, I mean, I don't, I don't want our town to kind of be flat-footed about this, but is there, um, are there uh, guidelines for these facilities not to be used in that fashion. And I know many of them, you know, don't have bathrooms, so it, it does make it very, very difficult to do this. But as I said, uh, this is what desperate people have done, and it's a growing trend. Well, so, um, I mean, this is all. That is my question. Okay. <laughs> that Thanks is my yourself. question. And, and I, I do wonder if there are contingencies in, um, you know, not being able to justify need. You know, so if I really wanted to store uh, my uh, personal belongings once again, would I find it difficult at this point in time to find a small or medium storage space because of the demand? And if, and if that is not the case, then why are we building these things? Are they for the ultimate purpose of uh, low-income con housing conversion? Because if that's the case, you know, we, we need to know that, I think, as a community going forward. That's all I have to say. All right. Thanks for those comments. Uh, yeah, I mean, these, <laughs> these are all, these are not like external storage things where you can just move a door up and, and go in. So these are all self-contained in, inside, and there's codes, I'm sure, to get in. Yes, that's what people are doing. By the way, I, I hate to say this, but that's what um, you know. People who are desperate, who don't have, um, you know, there's no available housing for what they can afford, right. and this is how they do right. it. You've, so, had, you've had your comments. Thank you. Thanks, Michelle. Thank you. Anyone else wish okay, to comment? Okay. Anyone else on the Zoom? You can unmute yourself or raise your hand. There's no one in the audience who wishes to speak on this. I think we're set. All right, at this point then, uh, we'll have another chance. I'll move that we adjourn the public hearing to June 16, 2022. Second. Moved and seconded. Called to question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes seven to zero. All right, we'll go around the board for comments. Uh, this time start with Ben. The only question I have is I didn't see Looking through here, how many units are in this building? Sabrina, would you be able to answer that question? Yes, good afternoon. Uh, we have an estimated amount of 900 units. Since it's a very large location, uh, we estimate to have around 900 units with 100 square feet per unit. Okay, that's it. That was my question. All right, thanks, Ben. Peter? Uh, just a, a, an arithmetic question. 900 units at 100 square feet per unit would be 90,000 square feet. Is that right? Yep, I think so. And the building here is listed at 41,000 square feet. But it's three stories. So. Three stories. Is that what it is? So so that would be 120,000 so square feet. So it's divided feet. up plus hallways and things. I guess. Okay. Um, first, regarding the trees, you, you're planting uh, Douglas fir, which is a, a good choice for that screening. But the caliper size is, is two and a half inches, which can't be. Uh, do you know how tall, what the height is of those trees that are two and a half inches in caliper? I believe uh, they're somewhere in the, the six to eight feet range with full mature height, uh, somewhere around 50 feet. So there would be at least six to eight feet. Correct. Okay. Uh, thank you for changing the color on the exterior. That's a, a big improvement. 
Uh, however, I think you're going to have to do some work on that roof. You know, we do not permit uh, flat roofs. You come up, you're going to have to come up with some kind of treatment, on, at least on the west elevation, which faces Violet Avenue and a, and a predominantly residential area, and the northwest corner. I understand you have a 360-foot length building, which is a, a big undertaking. But at least if you could provide some kind of treatment on the west elevation and the northwest elevation, that would be uh, a lot more uh, acceptable, I think, to, to the board and to the neighborhood. And th those are my other comments. Yep, something to uh, make it not look like a total, a big warehouse. Uh, Nicole? Yep, I just want to make sure that um, we keep an eye on any light spillage. I know that mm -hmm. you did add further uh, landscaping for that resident that's closest to this property, uh, but I would just be conscious of that in that particular area. Um, other than that, I think that's it for now. I'll just note for uh, for lights, we you know, we try to stay below 3,000 Kelvin temperature in our town. So, uh, no okay. comments. Or no. Steve, no additional comments. And John, does the applicant have a rendering of the building from the rail trail side? That's a good question. I don't believe at this point uh, we have an elevation but not a rendering. Um, I believe we can work on that and provide that for the next meeting. Okay, thank you. And uh, yeah, I echo the concerns about the appearance of the building, especially considering the size and scope of it. So I think a little work needs to be done on that. Thank you. All right. One more thing. Can we get the number of units listed on our plans or these sheets for the future just so for our edification? Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's embedded. I'll have to get that on there for you. It's on there somewhere. With and all good. storage, you know, not just this one. Yeah. Also, mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah, I guess you know the market demand is there right now. It is it is tough to find some units. I he I hear anecdotally, but uh, we've got a lot of storage comments. So you guys have to do your own marketing. At this point, we're, you've heard you've heard our comments on some of the architecture. Appreciate the the you know the sidewalk in front and moving the trash mm -hmm. and and all the additional landscaping. And you've got quite a bit of parking for, for something like this, I think. Um, so that's all I have. I move the planning board determined that the proposed store space application would not have a significant adverse impact on the environment. For the reasons set forth in the secret negative declaration for type one action dated April 21st, 2022. Second. Moved and seconded for seeker. Call to question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 7 0. I move that the planning board defer further action on this application and direct the applicant to respond to comments and writing of the planning board and those received from town departments and agencies, including but not limited to the following 1 through 12. Now would add uh, 13, you know, re examine the architecture and uh, at, at to, our, to, our, to the board's comments. Second. Moved and seconded. Call to question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 7 0. All right. Thank you. See you, next, see you in June. Thank you. Next up is a uh, minor subdivision at 4 Bower Road. Who's on to represent that? Uh, in person. That's great. Don't have me in person anymore, do you? It's refreshing. It's preferred sometimes. If you just speak right into the microphones, they should be live. Interesting. Uh, Ernie Martin. Um, professional engineer for the applicant, Mr. Gottschalk, who's to my left, and the owner of the property, Mr. Neaters. Mm -hmm. Sean Gottschalk just requesting the uh, approval of this subdivision. Yep, you've been here before. That's pretty straightforward, I think. Yes. Do you, does the board want an overview? I don't think we need it again. Okay. Um, 
I'll just go to Kristen for. Oh, sure. Ernie's just going to put it all on me now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so it's on for a public hearing this evening. Uh, it, it's actually uh, an unlisted action for seeker purposes um, uh, for an uncoordinated review. Um, most of my comments are just actually outlining a bunch of the code language as it applies to a minor subdivision. I do this because you know there are multiple uh, triggers that start once you get your approval. So I like to document all of those dates and time frames for you right in one place. Um, and then, uh, so staff is recommending that uh, the board open the public hearing, hear comment, um, and then close the public hearing, adopt a seeker resolution. There is a draft negative declaration for your consideration. Um, and also grant minor subdivision, conditional minor subdivision approval, barring response to comments um, uh, provided. Uh, that said though, um, I, I know that there were some notes um, that were passed along to the applicant uh, subsequent to you receiving this packet of information. So I don't know if there were any updates um, as it relates to that conversation, if you were able to connect with the town engineering department. Um, but I know that uh, there, there was a concern about the area of disturbance and its stakeout. Um, and as part of this initial submission for this meeting date, um, the applicant had actually exceeded the threshold um, and would have required a SWIP. Um, and so that is no longer the case. They were able to go back to the drawing board literally um, and get that threshold um, or get the area of disturbance yeah. under that threshold. Um, so we might be looking for a little bit um, more information to supplement that uh, just, just to ensure that that is actually the case. Um, and then I know that there was some conversation also, uh, Ernie and I had spoken uh, about wetland delineation, long-term wetland delineation. I think it was on the southeast portion of the site um, potentially. So um, we can certainly work through that um, at a staff level uh, if the board is comfortable uh, and they might even have, have some updates this evening. Uh, and with that, I'd pass it along to Andy. All right. Okay. Thanks, Kristen. Yeah. Andy? Yeah, so I got, <clears throat> excuse me, I got uh, I got a message from Ernie this afternoon. Unfortunately, I did not have a chance to catch up with him. But um, in general, what we're looking for um, is a note to uh, basically guarantee that um, the the area of disturbance um, for the project remains under that that uh, you know that zero point nine five acre threshold. Um, and I I think it I think Ernie and I can come up with that language. Um, you know, and you know if the board would permit i think we can do that as a condition of approval if 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 they so choose if, if you so choose yeah, and i would add also that uh, uh you know just to even though this is a small project there's going to be some surveying required to lay out the building the septic area uh all that is all part of this process so if it's a matter of uh, staking out for the disturbance uh, that all can be done at one time yeah sounds good yeah we don't want to for a single lot subdivision, you don't want to have yeah. to force you to do a swift here yeah. and avoid it. So, expensive there. All right. Uh, thanks, Andy. Uh, this is on for a public hearing, so I move we open the public hearing. Uh, second. Moved and seconded. Call to question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 7 0. Anyone wish to comment on this project? That's still on the Zoom call. Again, if you're on Zoom, you can just unmute yourself or use the raise your hand feature. Uh, if you're on a phone, you would use star six to unmute yourself. I'm not seeing yeah, anybody. Seeing none, I move we close the public hearing. Second. Moved and seconded. Call to question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 7-0. Uh, let's go around the board for comments. Uh, start with uh, Joan. I have no comments. Uh, Steve? No comment. Uh, no comments. Nicole? Uh, no, I think uh, it, it, as long as we get some type of note that says that the disturbance is less than the 0.95, mm -hmm. we'll say. Or survey or something. Uh, ben? No comment. Peter? No. Uh, and it looks like you worked out with the Department of Health, the, the septic location. We've there. already made a submission. We've gotten a response. Uh, it's mostly administrative type comments or minor details. So um, we're well on our way. Sounds good. Um, one, one thing quickly, Ernie, on the um, the notion of the uh, putting some 
something a little bit more permanent at the, where the wetland boundary, uh, buffer boundary is close to the limit of disturbance, <coughs> you guys will come up with something for that? Yeah, I, I've, I've walked this land <coughs> probably the whole parcel, and what's what's really nice about it is, you know, you have, you have the seven acre parcel, but there's a natural rock wall, old school rock wall that kind of, you know, separates the wetlands you know it's almost like a property inside of a property if you will but the rock <clears throat> but the rock wall it's old school it's handmade and it's kind of separating it on, on its own um, okay and at the at the end of the day you know we can you know i'm going to do my best to put the caution tape up where the necessary you know <coughs> landmark should be and you know, right. i'm not trying to do anything else but build a single family yeah. home and no no of course yeah and sometimes we'll ask for like just some boulders or something especially where it's where the limits of disturbance are close to the buffer, just so that it's not just for you, but for a future resident, if it's not you or someone else, that they don't clear that land <coughs> in the future. Yeah. So that's what that's about. And, and another another uh, nice piece of this property is the wet the wetlands become a buffer, you know, between Doug and, and myself, even though we're all kind of like a tight knit group, but like, yeah. it, you know, we need that privacy too, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. so we kind of want to keep as much there mm -hmm. as we possibly can. They might be good to see where that rock yeah, wall is so relative to the wetland. Down I there. just I want to make sure though it's clear. Just uh, so there is there's the wetland, but then there's a wetland buffer. So the buffer area, I think Mike wants to make sure that there's nothing that eventually encroaches on the actual buffer itself. So, okay. Um, that's that's just where that that boulder <coughs> might come in. And Kristen, if I might add that um, okay. Carol Mapper of Aspen Environmental, um, that 100 it is a hundred foot buffer and it is a New York State DEC regulated wetland, so it is kind of critical. Yeah, and and I. It's not just a town issue. I think we're well outside of that. So. Okay, just maybe want to see where that rock wall is relative to that buffer or whatever. Sure. Yeah. There's really just a couple spots where the limit of disturbance comes close to the buffer, and yeah, I think those are the spots points. where we'd want it. We want to just take a closer look at that, but that's not a you know we can do that following. Yeah, uh, that's not gonna like hold up. Uh, <laughs> right, yeah, right, sounds good. All right, Let's move forward. I move the planning board determined that the proposed four bower road application for minor subdivision would not have a significant adverse impact on the environment for reasons set forth in the secret negative declaration for an unlisted action dated April 21st, 2022. Second. Moved and seconded for secret. Call to question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 7 0. I move the planning board grant conditional minor subdivision approval subject to the following. Respond to comments of the planning board and those received from town departments and agencies and said response to be reviewed by the planning department as to adequacy and completeness inclusive of but not limited to the following 1 through 11 with a note and or survey stating disturbance is less than 0 0.95 acres. And I would add 12 to, to, to check to check the uh, buffer, buffer note that, you know, the boulder or something needs to be looked at. Second. Or if that wall is good. Orange cone. Right, moved and seconded. Call to question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 7 0. You're good to go. Very good. Step. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good luck. And just again, like those, the clock starts from tonight's meeting, so um, just keep keeping that in mind. There are built in time extensions within our code, so. You know, I've already spoken to Ernie about this as well, so. All right. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate well, it. Yeah. All right. Take care. Next up is Sadie's Place on Fairmont Avenue. Who's there representing? Okay. Great. Someone else in person. Hi. Welcome. I'm Amy Bombardieri with Diane Sucosa representing Stacy Lamar, the owner of Sadie's Place. Welcome. Let's see. Thank you. Thank you. Do your overview. The current use of the building is a doctor's office, and the proposed use is an, it's not actually an adult daycare, it's an adult, you want to? Social adult medical service, social adult day service. So it's like a child care service for seniors that have one physical or uh, physiologic impairment. It's not a medical model use. And we're currently open on Boardman Road right now. 
So the proposal is to do minor changes to the actual site itself and mm -hmm. occupy the building for the purposes of running Sadie's Place. I think one of our biggest questions is a situation where people drop off in the morning and pick up in the evening or people coming and going all day long. Or well, I, yeah, so we do have drop off, pick up and transportation provided. Um, the maximum people that that space is going to hold is going to be 18 to 20. Right now I'm at 14 or 15. Um, and it is skewed, so it's not a matter of everyone shows up at once. I've been driving by that property for uh, since we put the purchase offer on it, and it's much more busy there now than it will be with us. Um, it's certainly yeah. sufficient and meets the needs. Right now on Boardman Road, where I'm located, I'm next to Honeybee Daycare, and we're in a cul-de-sac in the roundabout over there. Yeah, I'm sure you guys know it. Yeah. And she's got pick up and drop off, and we compete for space at this point together, and we still make it work safely. So. I really do see no impact on this. I'm spending a lot of money on a property that I wouldn't spend it if I didn't think it could right. be done. Certainly. Just be told. All right. Um, so when I submitted this, I I don't really think it is a change in use actually because it's not an institution. I think it's basic. It's a business, which is a personal service business, which is what is occupying the building now as a doctor's office. So I apologize for that, but I, I thought it was actually an adult daycare. I didn't know there was a discrepancy. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks, Amy. Uh, go to Kristen. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is the applicant's first appearance. It's on for a seeker review, special use permit review, and site plan review. Um, under the guise of it being submitted for daycare centers, um, I know the language, we were kind of going around the language and the code. Um, mostly because I'm trying to work with you in terms of making sure it falls within a definition, and it does. There's four different um, definitions within our code for this type of service. Um, so in any case, it is allowed by special use permit, um, uh, which is reviewed by the planning board and site plan as well. is also reviewed, obviously, by the planning board. Um, but for seeker purposes, it is a type two action. Um, there's a specific re reference to that code. Um, I had fairly minor comments. Um, I think there was just, you know, some, some items that had come up uh, earlier this week, notes from uh, other discussions where, you know, the parking layout, um, possibly like restriping, making sure that it's very clear um, where the access is to the building, where the accessible parking is, obviously those are things you're paying attention to. Um, the layout of the parking, I think, you know, the engineering department had some concerns about the angle parking. We try to steer clear of it um, if it's in multiple sides of a building and we just want to avoid you know conflict maneuverability again getting back to safety um, and I think I had had a follow-up conversation with Amy so um, hopefully she brought you up to see uh, but yeah relatively minor comments I think the board just for their own benefit had a lot of questions just wanting to know just understand the service itself so like hours of operation days of the week um, who you're servicing just to kind of get a sense of is the the access to the building appropriate and enough and you know is the parking enough obviously you've already heard the allude, you know they were alluding to um, transportation and pickup do you have school buses going in and out of here that kind of thing um, not because there's an issue necessarily yeah. just trying to understand the programming that goes on there itself and I appreciate that because it's important for you guys to understand we've been open for just about five years now in the town of Poughkeepsie and growing and I was the first one and I was the one that came in back in 2017 and asked for the zoning code and Ann Shershin and, and Jay Baisley and everyone else was very helpful getting that done mm -hmm. and uh, like knock on wood we're doing well and we're providing community service there's more more of us are needed in this community we have a very large aging population and most people live at home with their family members and family members need to go to work they need to make sure that their, their parent or loved one spouse is safe so it is very much like a child care center I don't have buses rolling in and out I have family members that are generally dropping off their family member and picking them up largely at this point in the four and a half years we've been open we're out the door by four o'clock in the afternoon monday through friday seniors don't stay up six or eight hours like they're taking naps by the time they're leaving us because we keep them busy all day uh, this business i'm a nurse practitioner i've got 30 years in healthcare. this is a prime spot for me to be able to be a business owner of this business because boardman road right now i'm outgrowing that location and i'm at wait list um, as much as I love the location, it does have its deficits, and being four years into it now, I better understand the things that I need moving forward, something that I couldn't speak about four years ago when I was just a, a business model on paper with no experience, right? Okay, so this space right now will be ground, it'll be basically one level 
open concept to the extent that we're complying to obviously all regulations. People come in, they spend the afternoon with us, and they go home by generally, like I said, 4, 4, 15 or so, everyone's out the door. My people want, my staff wants off by 4.30, they're out. <laughs> uh, we're not necessarily open on weekends at this point, but we have marketed to be open on weekends. It's just we've never had a need yet. You know, right now we're supported fully by the Alzheimer's Association, the Dutchess County Office for the Aging, Sue Serino, and everybody else out there that knows us. So you can speak to them about the credibility of the business and the quality of the work we're doing. Um, it's a good location for us, and if I lose it, it's going to be disappointing because I really am at wait list, and we have community members that are like crying. The matter of fact, the night that we were talking, I think I had somebody that was like crying to me. What do you mean you can't take my family member? I don't have the space right now. I can't do it. And that's a heartbreak. You know, as a nurse, I don't like turning people away. So mm -hmm. it'll, it'll work. I understand parking has to be revised. And we saw that when we were buying the property. <laughs> Before you guys were saying it, I already knew what needed to be done to make this place prime. And we're, we're going to work within the scope of everything that has to be done because... Before this, I was a midwife, and liability risk is my business. I don't take any chances with anybody, and I'm yeah. certainly not taking chances in this in this business. I've never been sued yet, and I don't plan on it. No. Yeah, I mean, you likely don't need as much parking as the previous businesses did. No, we so, have, you know, so therefore it gives you some options to. Right, with three with with a ratio of basically one to seven, I'm going to have three employees myself and or my husband there. At the maximum, we're going to have five parking places, yeah. five maybe, and you know. We're going to negotiate and plan out and map out how to do the backup and pickup and things like yeah. that. But I don't see a problem because if you have three or four parking people there at one time, because it's going to work. It's a big enough parking lot. Yeah, it sounds like something. And it's a nice corner move. lot. It's nice, too, for my seniors to have the corner lot. It, to me, it just makes it more, it's a nicer view for everybody. And you can, you can kind of you know, work out that, uh, that layout. Yeah, with, so with that, staff. that just gets back to my point of, you know, staff's recommending that the board, you know, um, open the public hearing, close it, adopt seeker, and adopt a conditional special use permit and site plan approval. Um, if they're comfortable, if you're comfortable with um, the applicant coming back and working with staff and yep. just being um, conscientious of the timing and what they're up against. But um, of course, that's up for board discussion. For sure. All right. Thanks, Kristen. Um, Andy, do you have any comments on this uh, parcel? Uh, I mean, I think we've already hit on it. I mean, parking is my big issue. Um, the angled parking, especially the, the angled parking up near the proposed refuse enclosure, um, that's a, that's a hazard waking to happen. So if, if we can if we can look at some sort of a restriping plan that makes this uh, a little more um, compliant with with our normal standards, I think that would be a good thing. Um, and then the only other thing really is ADA compliance. Um, you know, I see the ADA parking space provided, which is great. Um, I see stairs at most of the entrances. Amy, is there a ramp? How, 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 would, how, would, uh, how is an ADA, uh, ADA accessible access to the building? There is a ramp that's parallel to the concrete curb. And okay. it, it, it needs to be modified. It's, it's too narrow right now. It's about okay. three feet, I think. It, and it's, has some deterioration, I think. It's yeah, so, so improvements are going to need to be made to that, but it it's going to stay in that location. Okay. 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 For oh, I okay. So I oh, so it's along the kind of the I guess it's the south side of the building that's that kind of tan color. Okay. Yep, it's right gotcha. there. All right, I, I didn't quite pick up on that. All right, that's fine. So those are the those are my two main concerns. All right, thanks, Andy. Uh, at this point, I move we open the public hearing. Second. Moved and seconded. Call to question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 7 0. Um, anyone on the call that wish to comment? Can you unshare your screen a minute, Amy? Let's see, let's see if we get, see anybody waving their hands or. Yeah, so again, if you're on the phone, it's <coughs> a star six to unmute. Otherwise, if you're on Zoom, unmute or raise your hand. Not seeing anyone, so Doesn't I'm going to anyone. say uh, move we close the public hearing. Second. Moved and seconded. Call to question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 7 0. Go around for comments. Nicole? Uh, yeah. I, the funny <laughs> thing is, is this is my foot doctor. And I was in this <laughs> building and I called them and I said, Are you moving? Because I have paperwork in front of me that says someone else owns it now. <laughs> um, <laughs> So that was kind of funny. Yeah, I mean, I don't really have anything. I know this building, you know, that ramp, you know, yes. Does it need some improvements? Yes, but 
I mean, people were definitely able to get up and down there in a wheelchair. I've had a foot that. doctor, no less. Yeah, had a foot doctor. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, my only thing was uh, I saw a comment from the water department that says that backflow prevention is due. And so the only thing I would say is, you know, get it done and resubmit that certification to them. Yeah, other than that, I would be fine. It's a good building. So. Yep. <coughs> All right. Uh, I mean, uh, this is the first time I hear about adult care, something like this. <laughs> it's, uh, I commend you on caring this much, and I wish you success. Thank you very much. Steve? Yeah, uh, just thanks for clarifying that there won't be any buses, which would might cre create problems turnaround. So that clarity helps. I have no other comments. <laughs> okay. Did you say this was um, a, like a second location, or you're just moving? I was just curious, and you don't have to answer that. I was just curious. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be the, uh, moving the Boardman Road location over. However, we have been, I've been getting calls from people for other counties for yeah. a couple of years now asking me to please do this over there, mm -hmm. and I'm just one person. I can't do it all. Yeah. So and I just also my primary just focus is Town of Poughkeepsie. Um, I do know of somebody who availed themselves of your services, so just a shout out to the good work that you do. <laughs> Thank you very much. Right. Thanks, Joe. Ben. Good idea. I like it. Go for it. Thank you. And Peter. No. Nothing further. I think we've talked about everything else, and you could work with the uh, the, the department with the on the issues of the. Oh, I did have a question on the trash. Is it is it you're trying to build a whole trash bin, or is it just a rollout kind of thing? So, just a rollout, like a residential rollout container, okay. would work for her. But yeah, it's not a. We still need an enclosure, I believe. Right. Um, well, you can't. Um, it Correct. might be something a little bit different, but you, you can't have the cans up against the building. Like there's fire code kind of okay. considerations. So if I they, don't if need the large dumpster. Really I've never needed yeah, a large dumpster, so we'll work like it out. That may not, yeah, so that may not be needed. Let's let's talk about what, yeah. what okay. you I mean, actually look, need. If you look at the, uh, the one across the street, the office space there, they, they built a, like, a little hut to put the rollout in. But Okay. That would be perfect. Just right straight across the street. Right. Yeah, we don't have a lot. I mean, you know, it's not a lot of garbage. That's good. Thankfully. Yeah. <laughs> so we're not going to. Uh, I guess that's my only last comment. And you already have some landscaping on it. Those trees are still there along the right side. So you're going to need a probably a variance on the sign location. Uh, yeah, Chrissy, Chrissy, our zoning administrator, did review the application. And, and so, um, you know, we'll, again, it's, it's a. I think there's going to be a subsequent, maybe short meeting that we can bring everyone together. So this way, we're just like, we're going to yeah. address this this way, this way. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it yeah. looks looks fine where it is. So where that's sign is. that's going to come back here. That's right. fine, but that's new to me. Right. So you're saying the sign that they have right now is not sufficient, or you look for something different? Because I don't personally like it. So if you're open to change, that's good. The location is. It's too close to the sidewalk. Yeah. yeah. All right. So by, that's fine. By side so the code, but but that's a good spot for it because that's where the you know the hedges are there and everything. So. Yeah. I'm open to change. There is an encroachment that's going to be remedied before. Before we close. Yeah. We're working on that. There's some bricks that have to be removed. Apparently, they're like bricks that literally just have to be picked up, and then it's not encroaching oh, okay. anymore. A couple things that's in the, the way. owner's problem right now, the current owner. And there's that, I guess, the vinyl fence along the back, the back property. That's that yours or the? That's theirs. That's the the other owner's. Okay. That's the other house next door, mm -hmm. as I understand. That's, that's, yeah. yeah, that's, that's in good shape. All right. I move the planning board determine that the proposal meets the criteria for seeker type two action pursuant to seeker part 617.5C18 and no further environmental review is required. Second. Moved and seconded for seeker. Call to question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 7 0. <laughs> I move the planning board grant conditional. Uh, special use permit approval and site plan approval subject to the following. Respond to comments of the planning board and those received from town departments and agencies and said responses to be reviewed by the planning department as to adequacy and completeness, inclusive of but not limited to the following one through nine. Second. Moved and seconded. Call to question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 7 0. Thank you very much. All right. Good luck with it. And, uh, Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate you staying in town of Poughkeepsie. That's a good day. Uh, I'll have you over once we're done. Though. A great <laughs> service. <laughs> great service. Thank you. Okay, next up is Savona's rear diner. <laughs> <laughs>
He just called you an old man, huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's what I heard too. I chose to, I chose to ignore it. <laughs> All right. I resemble that remark. Let's, let's put it that way. Savona's Rear Dining. Uh, who's on representing there, them tonight? Um, Jonathan Morocco representing Tinkerman Architecture. Jessica right. Lopez representing Savona's. Okay. Welcome. Present your uh, plan, whoever wants to speak. I was just going to say a quick something, and then Jonathan is going to present the uh, technical, uh, the, the, the drawings for you. Mm -hmm. um, so really what we're looking to do is just a minor uh, addition on the back via a patio um, in this unused space. Uh, in the past, it was behind Beach Tree, a walk-in. Um, there's always been garbages there, dumpsters, walk-in coolers. There used to be some cooking that would occur back there, a grill and a smoker. Um, and right now it's just dead space. So we thought um, we, we had this great opportunity to turn it from something that is dead space and you know garbage space into a beautiful little garden patio that could be, I think, a cool asset to the town. I don't know of anything else like it. And uh, so we're just excited at, uh, to be here and, and to show you what we're thinking. All right, sounds good. Make uh, use of the space. Uh, go to Eric. Sure. Well, town, did did, oh. did they want to? Oh, oh, sorry. I didn't sorry. Have someone from town wanted to. Jonathan, did you want to jump in there? Jonathan, you wanted to. Sure, I can add a little bit onto it. Over, um, overview it. <laughs> so, as Jessica said, we're adding a rear patio to the back. Um, currently, right now, there's not much going on back there, and we have uh, a great opportunity to turn it into a great space and to expand the restaurant a little bit. Um, it would be a seasonal use, obviously, because it's an outside space, but it would definitely help increase with the amount of activity they've had in the restaurant. Um, <clears throat> we, I'm going to share an image that we have as well as a rendering. Mm -hmm. So uh, what uh, we have been looking at is basically we have about a five and a half foot tall wall that will enclose the space except for on the side of the neighbor where we go up to about eight and a half feet and we feel that that's an adequate height to screen from the residential units that are located next door um, we are not proposing any lighting for this layout uh, i know that was one of the questions the board had instead we are proposing to supply led lit candles that will light up per table so that it the light levels will not be too great and it'll just be more of a, like an eating type of environment. Um, we will have access off of the patio through a gate over here that would then loop around and tie back into, there's parking this way and then the street would be that way. Um, yep. yeah. that, that, that about sums it up. Um, but we're, we're uh, open to entertain any questions that you may have. Okay, we'll have to you know make sure the lighting levels are sufficient for safety and stuff. Mm -hmm. I guess. But. Uh, Jonathan, sure. you best mentioned um, on the access. You said the the access to the rear, which we know about, it towards the street. Did you mean towards the street through the alley or through the restaurant? Uh, it would be through the alley. It, it would not be how we would get to this, but it does act as a second means of egress out of the space should it be needed. All right, so just to clarify, that access is just for emergency purposes. People aren't coming to and from the patio through that access, right? Correct. Okay, just making sure. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Yeah, I don't believe there's any lighting in that alley either. Or something. Right. So go ahead, Eric. Uh, let's see, the, this action, it's type two procedure, meaning that there's no environmental review required. Um, and the staff are recommending a, a public hearing. Uh, that the board and also a recommendation for um, that the board uh, grant a conditional site plan approval with comments uh, that would be addressed prior to signature uh, our comments th there are some not major comments um, I guess for board discussion one would be the uh, parking waiver uh, or not necessarily a waiver but the parking is in the board's discretion the parking for the technically speaking per code the parking in the ATC district is based on square foot area for outdoor dining which translates to one parking space 
uh, that would be the that would be the increased demand from this proposal. Uh, the board has discretion to accept. There is no parking on the site. Yeah. The board has the discretion to it accept says. the existing conditions. Um, there's also uh, the board might want to discuss the the rear alleys of egress. Uh, the chairman mentioned lighting. It's it's possible some emergency lighting might be appropriate there. You can discuss that. Um, a couple of other minor comments on the plan. Um, I think that's. Oh, and we asked for clarifications of some of the items and uses in that rear area. There appears to be uh, uh, there appears to be some some equipment or trash storage. It, it should just be shown on the plan. Uh, just it's not a problem, but just to uh, coordinate with the previous site plan approval for the Juliet Theater building, which is on the same lot. All right. Thanks, Eric. Andy, anything from engineering? Uh, yeah, we have very few comments on this. We're just looking for a couple of details in terms of, um, you know, what the, uh, the dining, the, the new dining area surface uh, would be constructed of, and then also for the um, defense uh, fencing itself, as far as foundations are concerned, the eight foot fence is, is a fairly tall fence, and given that it's a solid surface, uh, we're a little, little concerned about wind loads on that, so we just want to make sure that that's, um, you know, good. <laughs> Otherwise, we're fine. No other questions. All right, thanks, Andy. This is on for a hearing, so I move we open the public hearing. Second. Moved and seconded. Call to question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 7 0. Anyone on the call wish to comment on this? Can you? Uh, oh, if you could un uh, un stop un sharing. Unshare, yeah. Jonathan. So we can see the Zoom attendees. Uh, Thank you. If you are on the Zoom, you can unmute yourself or raise your hand. Not seeing anyone, uh, I move we close the public hearing. Second. Moved and seconded. Call to question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 7 0. Go around the board for comments. Uh, start with Peter this time. And I, uh, in the past few days, have spoken to people who are associated with the Arlington Business Improvement District. <coughs> uh, there's a lot of concern, apparently, that it's been expressed to the uh, district about parking in that location and that they are. They are planning to have a traffic study, a parking study conducted in the fall. Apparently, they're getting some volunteers from uh, Vassar. And this clearly, I mean, this, we, we're talking about generating about 20, possibly 20 parking spaces here. And we have no, everything that we do is measured. We measure building heights, we measure lot sizes, we measure setbacks. There's no measurement for this. It's in the yeah. only one of the few areas in the code where they leave it. It, it's, it says in the, in the, in the code 21022F, when appropriate, the planning board may allow on-street parking. What the heck does that mean, when appropriate? We have no way of measuring. And as far as I know, since this was enacted in 2007, no one has look, looked at this question, and it's a serious one. In 2007, the U.S. was headed, was headlong headed into a recession that lasted for the longest period in our, in our country's history. That was the same year when the master plan was enacted. I don't know if the people who were on the master plan committee looked at the Arlington uh, neighborhood, which was in dire straits, and said, listen, let's let the floodgates open because this is a neighborhood that desperately needs business and whatever we have to do to attract it there, we'll do. But we're being asked to make a decision where we have no, really no idea what the need or the current use is. Uh, when Dr. Modi came in, he wanted to build an extra building on his lot. Yep. The neighbor was concerned about uh, parking. Dr. Modi, engage someone to do a parking study. I don't think it was a, a real expensive proposition. And I think it's time that we started doing that. Mm -hmm. This is not somebody, it's not an attorney's office where you have a few people working. This is 20 parking spaces. When I came here tonight, 
I counted a dozen spaces at 4.50 in the afternoon on College U Avenue. What's that going to be on a Saturday night or a Friday night? I mean, I think somebody at some point, whether it's Savona's, the Arlington Business District, which has already said, I think pretty much committed themselves to do it. I think before we start making decisions like this, we need to make a quantitative decision. And right now, we're really not qualified to do that. Because we don't know, we're guessing. And as I said before, we had this discussion, I think that 20 parking spaces could have a deleterious effect on the other businesses in that area. Or maybe it won't. The problem is, we don't know. And I don't think we should be making a decision when we don't have good information. And, and we don't. I'd be happy to work with the Business Improvement District on a parking study. I mean, I think that would be something that would be useful. We'll because, talk to them. Yeah, yeah. I spoke to the, uh, the councilwoman. Mm -hmm. And I spoke to some people that, that you know, that I, I regard as credible people or, or engaged in this activity. And they, they really, they're very concerned, and I'm talking about business owners in that area, they're very concerned about the availability of parking. And they've had that discussion with the Business Improvement District. That's why they're conducting this study. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying, well, if Savonis wants to conduct a study, I would certainly be glad to see it. I, I would have no objection to it, or if they want to wait until the, the bid does it in the fall. But I don't think we should act on this guessing. I mean, just purely from an anecdotal approach, there's very little parking on that street. If you go there in the evening on Friday or Saturday night, I know they're having a problem with where uh, the tomato closed. People were parking in the tomatoes empty parking lot. Now they're open again, and they're having a lot of trouble because people are parking in their lot and not using their restaurant. Hmm. It's, 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 like I said, it has a deleterious effect on the neighbors. Especially, I hate to make a decision without having good information. I don't know if I would recommend holding up the, a particular application for it, but I think as a, a notion of doing a, a planning study for the future of Arlington, I think working with the Business Improvement District and doing that might make sense. I, I would still maintain that there's adequate parking in the vicinity if people are willing to walk. It's and easy. that's always the issue. Yeah. But, you know, we have to make the decision based on good information, not whether we think or it might be possible. This is a lot of parking spaces, a multiple of spaces that we've ever, ever confronted before in this neighborhood where on-street parking was, was required. And I, I just don't think we should make a guess that will have, a, again, a deleterious effect on the other business owners in that neighborhood who have already or are, and already are expressing concern about the availability of parking for their businesses. Well, I, we didn't hear any concern in the in the public hearing tonight, but I, I do think it's worth examining. Um, I think what we'll find in the end uh, is that there's adequate parking. What we have to do is make it clearer to people how to find it and make it as safe as possible for people to walk. That is based on not just me talking that is based on professional experience doing this in a lot of communities around New York State um, I think that it, we overemphasize the need for off-street parking um, when places are walkable especially so I think again I don't dis I would be very happy to to support doing a study and doing a study uh, so that we can prove what how to make the existing parking better I would be very reluctant to say no to a business right now when we our code clearly allows this to, to take place I think there's again it's the of discretion of the yeah. board it's everybody on the board know, knows how right. I and I don't vote actually so the board yeah, can yeah. decide yeah. but I, I just want you're making yeah, a very right. good case for, for the applicant well I, I, I because I, I truly believe it's yeah. important for Arlington yeah but you don't the, have the information that we need if you could provide it to us tonight but we're gonna vote tonight and if we vote tonight, and it turns out those 20 spaces are not there. I don't think any of the businesses will fail on Arlington you don't because think of this. So, no, I, I don't know that know. to be the truth, but I can't prove it to you tonight. And that's, yeah. uh, that's, that is my concern. Understood. That right. You can't prove it tonight. Oh, I, I will mention that um, in my, with my time in the town, there 
I'm aware of two parking studies that were done in the Arlington area in the past, obviously under conditions then, not now. And each of them found actually exactly what Mike just mentioned is common, which was that there is, at, at those times, there was adequate parking for the area and the need was to better identify it and have wayfinding signage for people to find it, to, to get there. But that in terms of quantitative numbers, those, those studies rec, uh, found that there was adequate parking for the area. And when was that? Uh, there was one in the early 2000s. And the so other, 20 years ago? Yes, it was, yes I, I, that's why I've, I've agreed yeah. to that. It was under different okay. conditions. Under totally different conditions. Mm -hmm. I think, it, yeah, there was one done as part of the, the new master plan back then, I think. Mm -hmm. But that... Uh, My concern I mean, is today. Yeah. Anecdotally, I, I think I often see that uh, lot near the veterans thing empty on Main Street, but that's a couple blocks away from this. So, again, it's a walking issue, as Mike said, too. But. All right, Ben, anything? Um, I kind of agree with Peter. I think... If Dr. Modi did a study, maybe this applicant can too for their property. And I notice on the cover sheet here it says increase of 47 persons, 44 seats, yet on the drawing it says 39 persons, 36 seats. What is it? 47 to 44 or 39 and 36? Can you elaborate? Uh Sure. The difference is we added um, eight seats in the front of the restaurant all on the sidewalk. So we are currently <laughs> there anyway. So, yeah. And that That's happen. correct. Those seats are currently there anyway, yes. So it's an adder of, of, the, of the dozen. And also regarding parking, there's businesses on LaGrange Avenue with parking lots behind their building which would go right against this. Um, people are, are going to start parking in there, even though it says you can't park there. Because it's mean, going to be easily accessible and it's going to be a problem. I mean, it has am, I, up am I allowed to respond to that? I'm sorry, I, I'm not quite sure how this works. But I, there yeah. will be no access for guests from the back patio. You have to enter through the front of the restaurant. The uh, gate on the patio is for emergency exit uses and staff only. So there would be no scenario where a guest would be accessing the patio from the back. So there would really, it would not be beneficial for them to park on LaGrange Avenue in that lot that's not allowed for parking, but public could, parking. But they could and walk through the alley to get to the front of the building. They could do that. Well, they certainly could, but I mean, we don't see that now, so I'm not, you know. Mm -hmm. Again, it's a variable we don't know. Like Peter said. I mean, that's the kind of thing a parking study would show too. If if a lot like that, which is a daytime business, could be used at night for restaurants, <laughs> that's kind of a shared thing. Jessica, it's uh, Kristen. I just have a quick question for you. Is this intended to be a year-round use, this extra seating outside? Because no, you're not going to have heaters. You're not going to have a lot of lighting. I mean. No, this is a good weather patio, Kristen. So really, the idea is twofold. One, we get extra seating when it's nice out. Um, and there's a, a, a nice outdoor space for people in the Arlington neighborhood to, to enjoy. And they're able to walk there because it is, you know, if it is raining or if it's cold, in, which is a scenario where people would not want to have to walk far, um, that patio would be closed anyway. Um, the, the so reason why I was bringing it up is because it, it feels like there's probably about three months, four months out of the year. I mean, sure, I'll sit outside when it's 50 degrees, but I'm, you know, maybe other people are uncomfortable with that. but. Um, you know, you're talking about maybe three months of the year where also Vassar College really is not around. I'm just thinking about in the area and the vicinity of how that might impact mm -hmm. that. And again, of course, we're looking for data to make um, informed decisions. But I was just, you know, thought I would point out that dynamic as well for the board's, you know, yeah, it's a consideration. It's a it's very, it is very seasonal, yes. I wonder also if Savonas <laughs> might, um, you know, for the longer term, if Savonas would be willing to work with the bid on that on that traffic study it, on support it's so, I didn't say anything before Eric but I do I mean I attend bid meetings I'm pretty active on the bid um, one of the last meetings we were at we were talking about parking uh, parking and and kind of within the bid throwing around some different ideas as all the businesses of how we can try to get some additional parking 
Um, uh, there were a few of us, myself, um, the new owners of the old tomato cafe, Bluestone, talked about the idea of trying to utilize one of the lots perhaps for ballet and all of us pitching in who are there in the evening. So it is something that we are as business uh, owners and operators um, approaching together. Uh, I would certainly never do anything or want to do anything that would hurt anybody else's ab ability to do business. I think the more successful every business in the bid is, the better we are as a community and the better it is for each business. So um, I, I, you know, I do actively participate in the bid and I'm involved in these conversations. So it's, it's not as if we're trying to expand and don't know what the effect on me um, or don't care what the effect on the neighborhood is gonna be. We truly believe that it will be beneficial to the area. I mean, just something the bid could talk to Vassar as well. I mean, if this, you know, this is a fair weather summer thing, the students aren't there and the, the whole north lot of Vassar is probably mostly empty there's a lot of opportunities remember so, the Dutchess County um, so, uh, what's the water. wastewater authority yes, right I mean that right, parking right, lot right, behind yeah. their building uh, yeah. you know obviously That's we need cool. to work with them on that both of those lots were in our discussion at the last bid meeting where this was a topic and we um, there was one person who was going to start conversations with the county to see if we could get anywhere there um, and I said I would start conversations with Vassar uh, to see if we could get anywhere for the summer for maybe us having some use for the for the um, for the the north lot there Vassar so is your is, landlord too right uh, Vassar is our landlord right. that's correct and they're they're wonderful and they're very supportive and they always want to help so i really think that there is opportunity in some of these empty lots for us to utilize um as long as we work together in the bid and 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 try to make it happen and the town support obviously would be tremendous so all right thanks jessica um uh, move on to uh joan um, just a quick question for the recent application this isn't necessarily for the applicant as much for the board that came before us it's around the corner it's a corner lot that I think there was a restaurant on the bottom yeah did we require a parking study for that application for no. 45 I think you're referring to 44, 44 the range no, we right. not because there's on-street parking in the neighborhood that's available yeah and I for me personally I, I do think it's significant that there were no objections raised during the public hearing portion of tonight um, I think the you know, there wasn't that objection because there wasn't a request for 20 parking spaces. If there had been, there, there would have been a lot of discussion. There is some space at the end of that street where Billy Bob's is located. At the, that section of College View has a few extra spaces available, but I'm sure that there'll be some overflow from that new restaurant. The question here is the number of parking spaces, not the fact that there are going to be parking spaces. So this is this is an additional 20 spaces that's really the concern that I, I'm expressing not just mm -hmm. because it's just common sense mm -hmm. well I'm just making my position known I don't see the need to not act on this based on this particular issue but I wholeheartedly endorse bigger efforts to study parking in the area well, I would suggest before I, I and I would su submit that the whatever resolution we have it be amended that the applicant be required to conduct a parking study and we've done that before we did that when dr modi made his application because there were concern over parking i don't see what i don't see why we should break precedent in this case yeah he had some on-site parking issues as well uh did the uh what was i going to say about the parking Let me go to Steve. Uh, Jessica, uh, it says you're open to 11 and you went and did discuss the emergency exit. Uh, since people could be exiting at night into that alley, is there any plans to put motion lights or something in there just for their safety? Absolutely. We absolutely would do that. Uh, just a note, though, we are not, if it says that, that would be an error. We're open at 10, 10 p.m. is when our kitchen closes, and we don't keep our bar or our dining rooms open after the kitchen closes, and that's only on Friday and Saturday nights. So it's 10 p.m. But yes, we would certainly add lighting back there. So if it had to be used, it would be safe. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, so you sure there's no provision of extending the season on uh, on this patio because mean winter use or fall use is available 
in the city where they have heating dabs and all that stuff. The right. town of Poughkeepsie doesn't allow us to have those right. heating. They, you know, they they for us a oh, yeah. little bit in, the, in in during COVID because we had no choice but to be outside even in bad weather. Um, but it's you know it's not an option for us now, so it's not an option. All right. I I think I want my position on here. I won't penalize the business for the lack of parking because I mean I've been in the city, I've been in Boston, I've been everywhere where. The parking is your responsibility when you go to a business, when you go to the restaurant. It's, you find a street parking or you go to parking garage. And this could be a good opportunity for the town to put parking meters, make space for parking meters and get more revenue. That's right? another thing or, a parking study could look at. Is, right. Is or, right metering. Sure. or could uh, in open uh, have somebody open a garage? Right in the area, if, but I think I won't put any demand on the business to do a traffic study. I would say, well, we grandfather all the other restaurants, and now we're gonna hit this one. Yep. I mean, the county had suggested uh, years ago to put uh, parking behind all those buildings along College View. There was a <coughs> the layout that was uh, that was drawn up, but. Uh, could not con get consensus from all the building owners at that time to, to do that. But that maybe it's going to be re-examined at this point. I don't know. With that, uh, Nicole? Yeah, I mean, ultimately, I have concerns with this project. Um, my initial concern was fire hazard uh, because it is enclosed. Um, at but I do see that you do have an emergency access, um, uh, you know, down that um, side area there. I just look at it and I see that it's three spaces. You already have the dining in the front and then you're gonna add in the back as well. If there's a fire, how does everyone get out safely? That, that was, that's my big concern. And I know the fire department um, did okay it. Um, another concern is noise. Uh, you do have residents that live behind there. I understand that there's not going to be speakers outside, but if you're having 40 plus people sitting outside, there's going to be noise. There's going to be laughter, loud talking, even if there isn't music. Um, and then lastly, my concern is also parking. Um, we've already approved a few uh, things that are going to be coming up the pipeline, they're also going to need parking in the Arlington District. They've already been approved, they're already in the works of being completed or being built. So there's many concerns here for me, um, but yeah, so that, that, that's, that's all. Yeah, it's, I understand Peter's concern. But uh, so I think it's part of an overall plan that has to be worked out with the bid. Uh, I did have questions on, you know, what you are. You know, I think uh, Andy alluded to it, but what you know, it's kind of a messy bit of pavement back there at the moment. What are your plans to do for a, a surface? Jonathan, did you want to speak to that? Sure. The surface is going to be a concrete slab. Okay, so you're going to re-pour over that hole. Correct. And clean, clean that up. A lot of cans and junk back there at the moment. And there's also the alleyway. You know, the alleyway it, you know, was flooded with the last rain in the front. Uh, there's some issues there, but it's just for emergency egress. That's good to hear. There's also a lot of garbage cans are stored in the alley. I don't know if that's something that will continue or is that where they get picked so up? So anything that is out. in... Oh, sorry. Anything that is in, uh, behind where the patio would be now lined up against that wall, which we have a few uh, grease containers and garbage cans, that would all be moved so that essentially there would be nothing in the alleys no, at no. all. Uh, they would be clear. Yeah. Yeah. So nothing would block any kind of emergency exit. That's correct. Yep. Yeah. And we made that note on the on the plan that those those pathways would be completely clear. There's actually a shorter shorter exit from there out to the nine or ten Lagrange uh, 
parking lot versus through the alley as well. All right. Um, the last thing I I would mention, you know, it's kind of a confined space, and you know, the kitchen exhaust is right there as well. So I don't, you know, think about the. Odor. There is no more kitchen in the beach tree room, though. So the kitchen is actually set off to the right and and back. Um, so it's it's probably a good. I mean, I. I I'm just I, saying, when I was visiting, I you know, there was quite a bit of odors there, kitchen odors, but I don't know if that's something to think about as you go forward with the plans. I guess some restaurants have put scrubbers on the odors of some sort, but however it works out. All right. I move that the planning board determined that the proposal meets the criteria for a seeker type two action pursuant to seeker part 617.5C9 requiring no further environmental review. Second. Move to the second for seeker. Call to question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. 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 Motion passes uh, five to two. I move the planning board grant conditional site plan approval for Savona's rear dining area site plan subject to the following. Respond to comments of the planning board and those received from town departments and agencies and said response to be reviewed by the planning department as the adequacy and completeness inclusive of but not limited to the following one through three. Second. Um, let's see. Moved and seconded. Called to question. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Right. No. no. Aye. And, and two opposed. How many opposed? Two. Same two. Five to two. Motion passes. And at this point, uh, we need to conduct architectural review. Can you throw that back up again? The picture of the, the rendering. So you're, are those plants along the top of the wall? Is that how that is working? Yes. It's like a kind of a window box kind of thing, huh? Okay. Anybody have any comments on architecture to look? Just I guess my only concern was in, you know, sufficient lighting for safety back there if you're only using table uh, Lights. Yeah, that was my concern, and I think Eric had raised earlier about emergency lighting in that space. I don't if none are depicted. So, we'll, so we'll, really need some lighting. Yeah, so some emergency lighting in the on yeah. the patio and in the space to to leave. To yeah, I ju I'm just thinking if something were to happen and people needed to leave quickly and and. It just seems that there should be some sort of emergency lighting that would kick in to give light to that area because I think it would get very dark, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. And you've got a small space with a lot of chairs and tables. You know, I just think lighting would be helpful if there was an emergency. Right. right. Uh, I'm glad to find Am I allowed to ask a question? Yeah. Uh, sure. Uh, how would the board feel about lighting along the b the bottom? Uh, where the fencing meets the the pavers, some lighting coming up from there, so like surrounding the patio on the bottom. Like an LED strip? Yeah, something like that, but something that would really light it up, but from the bottom rather than putting lights above. That's not a bad idea. Mm. It's like in the airplane. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I just wanted to see if there was any initial feedback. We'll 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 certainly address it, but that was my initial I think idea. That's that, yeah, and you could work with Erica to see what you know, what what? The like the, if the levels are sufficient for for uh, safety. Well, it doesn't go beyond the enclosure. Right. Yeah. Right. You don't want to, you don't want light spillage, but that's a that's a good option. Great. Thank you. All right. Any other architecture comments? I move we accept architecture as presented with the uh, with the condition that they look at the lighting issues. Second. With the, with their, with the department. Uh, moved and seconded. Call to question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 No. Any opposed? So it was the Peter, were you opposed also? Or? Yeah. Okay, it's, so it's motion passes five to two.
Mary. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you for the time. Have a good night. A few more uh, public hearings that to be adjourned. 8 Tucker Drive, I move we adjourn the public hearing to May 19, 2022. Second. Moved and seconded. Call to question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 7 0. 511 Height Avenue. I move the planning board adjourn the public hearing to May 19, 2022. Second. Moved and seconded. Called to question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes <coughs> 7 0. Arlington Farms, Malabar. I move that the planning board adjourn the hearing to May 19th, 2022. Second. Moved and seconded. Call to question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 7 0. Stewart Shops at, on South Road. I move the planning board adjourn the public hearing to May 19th, 2022. Second. Moved and seconded. Call to question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 7 0. At this time, I move we. Hope we allow some public comment on other agenda items in tonight's uh, items on tonight's agenda. Please limit your comments to no more than three minutes. Go ahead. Second. Moved and seconded. Called to question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. <coughs> Motion passes 7-0. Anyone wish to comment on the on the few remaining items in tonight's agenda? We have some architectural reviews and a All right, seeing none, I move we resume the meeting. Second. Moved and seconded. Call to question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 7 0. <coughs> Next up is all space on uh, Good evening. Salt, Salt Point. Good evening, Ken Casamento from LRC. How's everyone this evening? Hey, Ken. Uh, if I can, uh, I'm going to pull up my screen here. Yep. Yeah. Everyone can see the presentation, correct? Yep. Yes. Yeah. I have uh, Kelly Lago with me as well. Uh, so, let's start from the beginning. Sorry. So the project is the existing all space uh, facility located at 21 231 North Grand Avenue. Uh, it's approximately 6.23 acres. Currently zoned RM residential multifamily in the back and proposed is IL for light industrial. The location for the zone changes is a parcel in the back that will be consolidated into the whole lot as a whole uh, for the existing facility. Uh, it's this portion here you'll see on the map with the red arrow. Uh, this here is the parcel that would be rezoned and would be redeveloped as part of this action. Just kept getting photos. Yeah. <laughs> so in 2018, uh, we were before the board, uh, and there were three parcels here uh, of record, and we combined two to propose, develop the front section here that's listed under developed in 2020, 2021, and then the proposed section in the back now we're looking to develop as well. This was last year's approved plan uh, for the self storage that was located in the front. It, as it builds up that plan, as it was completed, this, you roll off the video. Sorry. You don't need to go through that, sorry. Right. So uh, the proposed site plan uh, calls for eight new buildings to the existing 16. Uh, it is over the back of what is now a property line, but we're consolidating, proposing consolidating it into one lot line, uh, one lot of record, and therefore there'd be no setbacks to the interior lot lines or anything to worry about that is there now. We're proposing to screen along the rail trail and along the rear property line along the rear street. We had looked at alternate, yep, alternate residential uh, layouts for this area historically, and based on some of the existing conditions with wetlands and some of the site constraints there, they, they just weren't feasible to develop in that area. So 
the as you've seen today, there's there's a need for this service, and the applicant's looking to expand the existing facility into this area. I think tonight um, we were just seeking the board's um, circulation for the agency for this project, and um, then of course we've received the comments um, from the consultants and from the town. So we'll review those. Um, we just have one question which we can go over if you want afterward, as far as the classification classification of the action. Um, but we're happy to answer any questions that you have. All right. Thanks, Gary. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. <coughs> This is a first time application to the board uh, on, on, for this application. Um, the, it, it is a uh, it's recommended the board declare its intent to be the lead agency um, and circulate the application to identify involved agencies. Uh, that said, there's a number of comments from planning and from a number of other reviewers uh, to be addressed for next time. Um, we'd, we'd be happy to meet the applicant over them if desired. Uh, before our next appearance. Uh, ones that pl the board might want to discuss at this time, just to move it along. Uh, in particular, any thoughts about the proposed rezoning? Uh, previous applications here did also involve rezoning. This is a little different because it's, it's a little yeah. closer to residential right. on two it's sides and not just one. Sure. And uh, we also recommend the board might want to discuss the concept of access, emergency access from North Grand Avenue requested by the fire department. Um, uh, the, uh, and a couple of other things, uh, effects for the neighbors, we suggested that the applicant address perhaps cross-sections um, or other mechanisms to evaluate um, any issues for the adjoining residential uses, and they'll need to provide some more information for uh, the wetland on the site, including the buffer, uh, potential encroachment and or possibly an aquatic resource permit among other things. So um, with that said, I guess I'll, I think Andy and I think Carol Knapp of Aspen Environmental is also on uh, mm -hmm. for their comments. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, there's a big, big wetland right in the middle of this. Uh, Andy, I'll start with you. Sure, thanks. Um, yeah, so we have, you know, fairly generic comments um, to be addressed, you know, as the plans get developed. Um, we have some concerns about, um, you know, stormwater design in particular, uh, depth to groundwater, separation to groundwater for the underground practices, um, available infiltration rates, um, things that could be a challenge for, for Ken and his team to, to, to take care of. So we'll need to see some, you know, soil testing, um, prefer, to, prefer to witness them when that happens, usual stuff. Um, I believe the wetland does cross, uh, it, it seems to take a route where it crosses over uh, the proper line into the rail trail and then back again. Um, we probably want to keep an eye on that and probably loop the DPW, county DPW in to make sure that um, they don't have any concerns. Um, um, you know, one thing that has been, uh, was discussed um, during the workshop meeting was potential for an emergency access uh, from North Grand Avenue. Um, I think that's probably not a bad idea. Um, the other thing to think about, um, <clears throat> I didn't, uh, I didn't do any measurements. I, I know that there's a fire hydrant that's being proposed to be brought up the hill, um, but we need to make sure that that is within the proper distances from each of the buildings for fire protection. I know that I don't believe the buildings are sprinklered, but um, we do need to make sure there's a hydrant within that minimum distance. Um, I think that pretty much covers it for now. Um, I did notice in that in that uh, what what you showed on the screen, Ken. It looked like you did show um, some pavement going around the uh, the south side. I think it was Building X. Um, I think that's a good good plan compared to what we had seen in the the, the submissions yeah. and the materials. Yeah, correct. So, yeah, if you eliminated the access on the back of it, correct? Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to see it. I wanted to see you it all around that building. Yeah. Oh, you wanted to see it going around. Yeah. Okay. The, the hard part is going around, and is is the great. We were trying to leave uh, as much of the vegetation that's natural back there. Mm -hmm. uh, I can show. Just let me sh grab this one screen. Up. I'll show this here. Uh, as you can see here on the grading on the one side, um, we're trying to avoid you know, pushing this back and to leave as much of that natural buffer there. Uh, 
to answer your question though about the hydrant, we will look at that and we'll talk to George if we do make that connection out to the street uh, over by Building X. Uh, there is an available hydrant right here as well, so that helps uh, make that uh, connection there. Uh, the wetland is under an acre uh, in the middle. Uh, although it's a lot, it seems to be large, it is under an acre in total. And we did do any some preliminary testing before we uh, developed the plan. Um, so we'll get those data to you as we finalize, if we have to go back out and supplement some, we can coordinate with your office as usual. Great, okay. Good, thank you. That's all I had. All right, thanks, Andy. And uh, let's go to Carol, let's see what she thinks of the weather. <coughs> It's connected, um, connected further north, I believe, as well. So. Yeah, it is, it's connected off-site uh, across North Avenue, and then it runs along the rail trail and uh, goes into some DPW, I believe, uh, discharge and under under Ennis Avenue, or, or um, South Point Turnpike. Um, I met with uh, Amy and Kelly out in the field because I had a, a number of issues. Um, you know, they, the original plan had the wetland delineation from 06 in 2017. That didn't have a calculated area on it. Um, but more importantly, there's a lot of, um, because we don't, we didn't have the area of it, uh, it. The plan proposes blacktop right up to about 15 feet from the buffer. Um, and actually, it looks like in the back near North Grand, within a few feet of the property line, um, there's uh, no planting mechanisms for any protection. Um, the habitat study is, it, it makes no mention of the wetlands, it makes no mention of the forest or bad habitat that's going to be coming down. So that kind of needs uh, a lot of updating. Mm -hmm. um, there's some discrepancies with regard to building labels and sizes and um, I, I mentioned the SWIP to Fairview Commons. <laughs> so. There's just a, a lot of uh, a lot of just it, it, it's it's preliminary, so we're looking for a, a good deal more information, um, and especially about plantings along the rail trail. And you know, it's a very limited area. Once once you get that uh, pavement and drainage area, we're really only talking probably 20 feet, and they're proposing some really large plantings in there. So we just we just need to work on it. All right, thanks. I mean, there's a big berm adjoining the rail trail there, but uh, so that might help, but need for screening. There is, that we are, you know, we're certainly cognizant of that. And we did walk the site with Carol. She was kind enough to go out and meet with us. Um, we did talk about some possible vegetation between the pavement area and the wetland, which we'll work with her on. That was um, her idea, and we think that's a great idea. It protects the kind of the critters and everything in the wetland and then it just keeps a buffer from the users on the site, you know, to the wetland. So we thought that that was a good idea. Um, certainly we'll work with Bob Balkind and DPW just to see if there's any impacts, but this site is much higher than the rail trail um, over in this area. It's deceiving. We actually walked over to the edge and it drops down quite a bit, but we'll, we'll get those elevations and cross sections so you can see it. 10 plus feet. Yeah. All right, uh, Eric. Oh, sorry, you already went through that. <laughs> <laughs> nope, we're not. No, we'll talk no, more. No hearing. No hearing. Stuck in a time loop. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I, I, I like the look of that uh, residential plan you put in there, <laughs> since it's near the rail trail, but that's right smack in the middle of the wetlands, so. Just feels like you're fitting a lot of buildings in here, but let's go around the board and see what people think. Um, cool. Yeah, I mean, I don't really have much here. I, I did see you might need a, a variance for the setback. Is that correct, you guys? Correct. Okay. Yep, correct. Yeah, I saw that that you might be a little close to some residential residential that, lot there, right? That's the hundred foot. Yeah, the hundred foot. Mm, that's yeah, that's a concern. Yeah. Um, other than that, I mean, you know, I, I don't really have any issues with, with this property. All right, Ahmad? I, I think with all what's been discussed, there are a lot of things that need to be addressed with, uh, with land and residents and 
Mm -hmm. So with more information, probably we have better idea. Right. Uh, Steve? Uh, yeah. Uh, in being and having been on that rail trail in the past, uh, what is the average increase in elevation from the current buildings on the west side to the ones coming up on the east? Over 10 feet, Ken? Yeah, it's it's about 10 feet um, in there in elevation. Um, I don't have, I'd have to pull up what it is on the existing buildings, but right around building B in the back of the property, the one that goes along the edge, it's a little over 10 feet higher. Is so that what, what we're describing, so there's, I think there's two answers to that question. What Ken is describing is the distance between the rail trail and what would be the finished grade for the proposed buildings is at or more than 10 feet. Um, so the rail trail drops down about 10 feet in the back, um, below grade on this grade. The second question that I think you were asking is what's the elevation or the grade difference between the existing buildings that are there now and the new buildings? And I think it's greater than that. We just don't yes. have the finished floor elevation of those existing buildings. So the existing buildings down below are around 186, and we're up around 201. And two, between 201 and 210. Okay. And how tall will the structures be? I believe they're, oh boy, I have to get the exact height, but I believe they're 12 feet. I have, I have to get the exact height, and I'm sorry that I don't have that. But they will be, just for visual purposes, the exact same uh, structures that are on the site now. Okay, so they're going to be fairly close and visible from the rail trail. Um, no, they, they actually won't. The rail trail is 10 feet below um, our property. And so when you walk over to the edge of our property, you look down about 10 feet. So they, they actually aren't very visible from the rail trail. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. No John? Um, I guess I do kind of feel like there's a lot going on that's getting fit in here, especially with the wetland right in the middle. Um, but I'll just be curious to hear the next round of information that comes in once they work with the yep. consultants. Uh, ben? Nothing. I think everything's covered. And Peter? No. Yeah, I guess my concern is, you know, is this, is this too many buildings? Too, you know, pushing the, to the edge if you're going to need to hit the, the 100 foot buffer, can you avoid that? I don't know how, how much of a variance you're looking for. Um, I didn't remember that. Did she specify that in the. Uh, What's that? The variance in the for okay. 100 foot buffer. I'm just, I guess I'm most concerned about the house. There's a house right across. Yeah, North Grand that's going to be looking down on this site as well as uh, about three other houses that are right backed up against it you know unlike the previous expansion which was down in the gully more this expansion will be you know right behind these people's houses and I'm, you're not showing any <coughs> landscaping on your site specifically but I'd, I'd have to examine what kind of buffers there now and see what you're cutting etc So I, I just uh, not crazy about uh, the big, the big, uh, what do you, big setback issue. Okay, all right, we can look at that. We do have a lot of vegetation that we were proposing there that was all evergreen, but we'll, I think we can better illustrate that to you um, so that you get a perspective of what that's going to look like. Okay, I mean, I didn't see any vegetation listed on the landscape plan for on the south side there where those three houses are. Okay. Yeah, we didn't go into the tree line there um, because we were looking at trying again to maintain as much as we can, and we're right. we're you know that's substantially higher uh, with the trees in the back, so uh, that cuts down about ten or twelve feet to get to where our uh, you know our elevation is for the building. So we were looking to keep as much of that vegetation up high that's natural. Obviously, we can take a look at it and see if we can supplement that and add some evergreens in there consistent with what we did the further time. to the yeah. Uh, yeah. west from here. Yeah, but I mean, in leaf off conditions, you know, make sure yep. there's still some screen. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. We can look at that. And again, we did all that row of evergreens um, for, you know, on the other projects, so we can look at how we may be able to add that here. And I'm trying to remember what we did last time with the roof color. I remember that was a discussion. I think white is what you wound up with. But. 
We, we did. I think there was a request to try to make them dark, and because of the, um, you know, the amount of um, heat that's generated on the darker roofs, we stayed with the white roofs. Okay. Just thinking of visual impacts from all those neighbors encroaching on them. Sure. They, they did not, uh, when we get to the public hearing, we may hear from them, but we'll see. Okay. All right. I move the board to declare its intent to be lead agency to coordinate with the environmental review of the proposed project as a type one action and authorize the planning department circulation of a notice of, of intent, copy of the EAF, and a copy of the application to identify the involved agencies. Second. Mr. Chairman, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I just, uh, my question was why this project was classified as a type one action when all other um, projects on this property have always been an unlisted action, even with the proximity to the rail trail. It's, it's directly contiguous to the rail trail. The previous action was not. I, I can't, I'm not sure about the details of the previous, uh, but this, this one shares a boundary with the rail trail. And the previous lot line revision involved the creation of a parcel that was adjoining the residences to the south, but not contiguous to the rail trail to the north. That's my. It, it actually, it, it actually was. It was because we consolidated the lots. Um, I just, I okay. really never um, had heard that a rail trail is something that triggers the um, project being a type one action. I don't think that we did that with the Tucker Drive project either. That was adjacent to the rail trail. Hmm. So I, I don't know, but the cri the criteria for type one. Is if it's adjacent to a public to public recreation land, which the rail trail is, then um, there's a reduced threshold for disturbance, making it a type one action. Usually, the threshold is 10 acres for commercial development, and if it's adjacent to a public recreation resource, it's 25 percent of that, which is two and a half acres. And I believe the proposed disturbance in the EAF was was greater than 2.5. Okay, I, 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 that was just the first that I heard that, that we've always done this as an unlisted action. I mean, I think at the end of the day, the impact is uh, the same regardless, but I, I didn't realize that it was going to be a type one action. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and I, I don't know, um, I can't confirm this, because I actually did the last time you were in here, so that could have just been total a mishap okay. on my part, um, and I'll own that, but uh, what um, I was going to say is that the Seeker Handbook was actually updated in 2019, so I think there was actually more attention given to rail trail and public access, and, uh, that could be and too. yeah, there was some other attention given to those. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we'll Very well. So I apologize for the interruption. So we'll go with the scoping and the EIS. And stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Did I hear a second? Yes, I moved and seconded. <laughs> Call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 7 0. I move to the planning board for further action on this application pending establishment of a lead agency and subject to the following. Respond to comments of the planning board and those received from town departments and agencies and set responses to be reviewed by the planning department as the adequacy and completeness inclusive but not limited to the following 1 through 13. Second. And that includes tonight's comments. Yep. yep. Uh, moved and seconded. Call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 7 0. All right, good luck with the updates. Thank you. See you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I'm sorry I talked so much this evening. Um, <laughs> <but> this <laughs> so I'm going to sign off at this yeah. point because everything else is architectural. Yeah. So Thanks. have a good night, everyone. Good night. Thanks, Lisa. Take care. All right, Eastdale Village Ambulatory Center. Well, good evening. Good evening, board. How are you? Okay, got me there. Okay, um, Mr. Chairman, if I could uh, share my screen and uh, and maybe get started here. Is that? Yep. Sounds good. And, uh, and thank you. So again, Jeff Kane here um, uh, representing East Hill Village. And uh, I want to talk about architectural review for the Ambulatory Surgery Center. Uh, last time we were here in February, uh, the board uh, approved this building. Um, it's a 12,005 square foot uh, single story building uh, for um, uh, same day, typically non-emergency uh, surgeries. 
Um, just to orient um, uh, the board here, although most of you uh, have seen this before, um, but this is the, uh, the, the west side, Route 44 here runs across the bottom of the screen, and the ambulatory surgery center is, uh, is, is here. Again, access is located off of the internal uh, road network of Founders Way and Elizabeth Lane, which connects into, uh, uh, into Route 44. Here's a blow up of that uh, of that section. You can see it's also called Building F, as we uh, as we have uh, labeled these uh, these buildings. So it's really Building F is the is the building that we're talking about here. Um, and uh, one of the things that's um, <coughs> that's I think important to understand uh, this building is um, in the context of the landscaping, particularly across uh, the the Route 44 corridor, and how this building uh, has been uh, has been has been developed. Uh, and how the landscape plan have been developed to, uh, to work together. Really have a kind of a, a multi-layer landscaping proposal here. Um, this is, a, again, the, the, the frontage on 44. You'll, in the street trees and street lights are there uh, now, but those, uh, those elms give a, um, uh, give a, a break of the view uh, for, to, the, to the front of the building. That's the first layer of the, of the landscaping. Secondly, we have a series of, uh, of, of shrubs and they are um, uh, in the in the, the the red circles. Those are the Japanese andromeda evergreen shrub. Um, uh, that's uh, you know, typically four to eight feet, depending on uh, on how it's uh, how it's shaped and maintained over the years. And then we have the the, the boxwood, the variegated boxwood, which are the uh, the green circles here. Again, another evergreen shrub, uh, typically three to six feet uh, in height. And then. Uh, lower than that, we have the, the the fountain grass in 30, 36 inches typically, and those are the uh, kind of the, the purple circles here on the plan. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of it is again populated by ground covers and uh, and plantings, uh, uh, perennials, annuals uh, uh, across the uh, across the front of the site. And I really only focused in this uh, this series of drawings on the Route 44 corridor, but certainly the landscaping carries around uh, the other uh, the other sides and uh, edges of both the building. And the uh, this entire uh, uh, parking area as well. But I really wanted to focus on 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 that uh, that that frontage. Uh, so to get to the building architecture itself, um, um, it's not a black and white picture. I put this up before. I thought it looked like it was in black and white. And it really is color. But the um, uh, it really is. But we picked the um, uh, the hardy uh, 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 palette of colors here. So this is uh, an, an iron gray is the, oh, I've left my samples here. Let me grab those. <coughs> so most of the, um, uh, again, the, uh, the iron gray, most of the, uh, the, uh, the planking is a three and a half inch, three and a half inch, and seven inch I reveal on the planks to give some definition to the frontage across the uh, across the the building. Uh, so the trim is also in the uh, in the iron gray. Uh, we have the black architectural shingles, and then the uh, the the porch, the covered walkway here, uh, has the um, cobblestone uh, for the uh, for the materials on the on the porch to give that uh, some differentiation to the uh, to the iron gray. On the rest of the building, so that's really on the the interior um, uh, portion of the of the site. Yep. This middle door here, well, I'll start where you come in. As a patient, you would come in on the uh, on, on on this door, walk into the uh, to the waiting area, and after you're treated, uh, you exit this uh, the center door, and then on the east elevation, again carrying through the uh, the materials and colors and. You can see here more of the kind of the standing seam metal roof on the uh, uh, on the on the porch and the and the and the the, the pork or share. but on the this elevation is the is the staff entry uh, into the building. Again, we've, we've kept these uh, gables here to provide some uh, some really kind of a look and feel of a of a two story building here, even though it is a single story building. Um, and uh, particularly this this east end has a much more uh, uh, non commercial uh, feel on the, on this look. Uh, continue around the corner. Uh, this is the Route 44 corridor. Um, we've uh, kept the uh, kept the kind of the glazing pattern, although we've got some differentiation at the uh, the two gabled ends. I uh, added a third gable here in the middle. Uh, we have um, uh, shutters uh, to provide a little color on the uh, on those. Uh, this is the 
the woodland cream um, uh, hardy color for those um, uh, for those uh, for those shutters. Uh, this uh, doors here for the uh, electrical room, and on the west elevation, uh, we have doors for emergency access, the water room, and um, uh, and receiving are on uh, are on this door. Um, one of the other uh, uh, issues that's uh, that's relevant to the code is um, the requirement that a, a building that's longer than 60 feet uh, be designed so it doesn't look like one long building, but it really is a uh, is a is a compilation of of of, uh, of multiple buildings. And you can see how again with uh, the use of the the materials and uh, and and the gables, we've really tried to to make this look like. Um, uh, uh, really going to break it up into several different elements, so it's it's multiple buildings on both the north elevation and the and the south elevation. And as I talked about, with that kind of adding that center center gable here on the uh, uh, on the south elevation to break this up into three kind of distinct uh, uh, distinct patterns. Um, if there are comments, or you want me to, uh, to to pass these uh, these color boards around for the. Yeah, Rachel can grab. We can pass them. Now let's just go around and see what people think. Uh, I mean, it looks very dark to me uh, overall. Versus, I guess a lot of your other buildings have a multi, have have different shades of the of the colors. And I'm I'm sorry, I missed the first part of that. I'd uh, say a lot of your other buildings have different shades of the colors. You know, playing the different shades of gray or white. Or and this seems very dark to me and very long. I don't know. Yeah, and and. This building, you know, I talk about the context of the landscaping. Um, <coughs> the context of the uh, of the site is uh, is the other thing to take into uh, into consideration here, because there are uh, again the three story residential buildings just behind this, which are which are white. So this provides some differentiation from the other um, uh, the other okay. buildings throughout the throughout the site. Right, the tall there's the, the the five apartment buildings in a row. Yes. All right, let's. Uh, and, they, and you can see those uh, here, right? Yep. These are uh, these are right uh, right behind. Uh, Peter, anything? Uh, first, uh, regarding the landscaping, and I, I very rarely have seen a project at this stage where the the landscaping has um, added so much to the project. It's really extraordinary. Mm -hmm. With regard to the color, I think because the it's so close to um, the road. It's less just disruptive than it would be if it had a lot of bright colors. And finally, uh, one of the uh, residential buildings to the west, uh, on the west boundary, we, there were very long buildings. We had a discussion about possibly adding uh, at least one dormer on each, on each end, each section. Or maybe even a couple of, you know, that would effectively div divide the building, and it wouldn't have this this sense of length to the extent that, that it has now. So you're suggesting in, in yes, this area right there. of uh, right, if there's some yeah, a dormer right. there and a dormer on the what would be on the other side on the corresponding yeah. right, right. It would divide the building, and w you would have less of a sense of of length. Yeah, and if you could put even a, a couple of in the center. Yeah, that I think that's a good idea as well. It looks because it, it worked looks, on the other building. How, I mean, the how residential all, buildings in the back. We added the or you added the the dormers, mm -hmm. and it ch totally changed the look of the building. I mean, how long is that building overall? I didn't. There's uh, no scale it's uh, uh, 170 feet. Yes, yeah, so that's that's yeah. half a football field here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Certainly. Right. We'll certainly look at something yes. um, um, like that to break that up. So that's Mr. Palladino. Is he still with you? Absolutely. Right. This is uh, right. Giovanni uh, led this uh, led this design effort. Right. Okay. right, Ben. I, I like it. I have nothing to add. Nicole. Um, I thought that maybe the color was a little dark, but. Yeah, if you if you have those white buildings in the back, then yeah, that will that will break it up a bit. Yeah, I understand Peter's comment about his 
close to the road and it's down yeah. down lower. And, yeah. um, I'm out. So, is this like uh, overnight or just uh, during the day? No, this is uh, this is same day. This is no no overnights same. here. No uh, right. No no. This is uh, uh, yeah. As early as they start, whether it's eight o'clock till, till till four p.m. Typically, when they're uh, when they're operating. Mm. So, how many? Be what the capacity? Um, uh, there are six ORs in the uh, in the facility, and uh, I think I think there's twelve recovery beds. Mm -hmm. I mean, you you're creating the a town in a town. Huh? Uh, it, it has become its own center, absolutely, yes, yes. Right. Anything, uh, Steve? No additional comment. Joe? No, I have no additional comment. I guess you have our, uh, your, uh, like Peter, mm -hmm. I think the, uh, the dormers, might, you have a couple extra dormers might, okay. might, might help work there, but uh, I know Giovanni is a good uh, architect, he's done a great job with the whole, with the whole project. Thank so you. We'll, okay. we'll, uh, what do you want to do? Well, if, you, anybody, if you want, could we have it um, that you just bring it back to us? We would just circulate it to, um, well, to Carl, and, and as long as it looks like it, it's intent. We can do that. Yeah. yeah. Rather than holding them up Rather for another month. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, in that case, I move we. Uh, Except the architecture as presented, but with the additional um, dormers that we discussed, modifications, modifica modifications we discussed to be uh, reviewed by staff and and myself. Second. Call to question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion passes seven zero. Only, only just one quick follow-up, just to be certain that the dormers are, you know, in proportion to the to the structure. In other words, not, not a, uh, a two foot dormer. Right. No, it, it will, right. Um, uh, are you kidding? Giovanni wouldn't let that happen. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the, uh, you're absolutely right, uh, uh, Peter. They have to be, they have to be proportional. They have to be right. It has to, uh, it has to look good. And um, uh, I, I, uh, I'm not going to make any comment on uh, on style or you form there because so he far, will, so. right, he'll, 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 right, right, he'll have a, I think it's a sense that we'll share with, uh, with you. Thank you. If you wanted, to, if you wanted to show a couple different options, or <coughs> choose from or whatever. Um, okay. Next up, K one, K two. K one, K two. So we 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 previously looked at uh, at K one, made a couple of uh, minor uh, minor tweaks to it. So uh, at Eric's suggestion, we have both K one and K two here um, uh, together at the same time. And again, to, uh, just to remind the board of where we are, in this case, uh, 44 is across the top of the page, and building K1 and K2 is right here in the, uh, in the, in the commercial core. And here's a, a blow up of the area. Uh, K1 of uh, the foot doctor, uh, Nicole, it's uh, right, so you can, right. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Sims is here. Um, all right, um, and uh, uh, these buildings, Again, kind of the uh, how the how the night worked. These buildings are also in the uh, in the gray pattern. Uh, we've got a little more uh, variation on the on, on K1. At K1, the um, uh, bottom trim panel are the the, the gray slate, a little uh, lighter gray. Um, the top is my uh, my cobblestone, which I think uh, you have uh, you have there. Again, the black architectural shingles, um, and then on the K2 building using the iron gray as well but in this case we have a nickel gap siding to have a little uh, little consistent gap between uh, all of the uh, uh, all of the, the 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 panels across the uh, mm -hmm. across the building uh, to provide again that kind of those lines with more definition of the uh, of how it's developed and architectural panels uh, down uh, down below on the on the lower path lower part of the k2 but again using the uh, the hardy uh, okay. uh, iron gray color and awnings on that Say again. And awnings on that. And awnings on that. Yes, yes. And they won't, probably won't be gray, but um, uh, it's, uh, I'm not sure that the intent was with the color of those awnings. 
Um, the uh, and again, the, the rear of the buildings can carry in the color pattern through. Um, uh, it's really kind of dramatic in the back. You can see how the uh, how the, the, the land just kind of falls off across the, the back of uh, the back of the, the property here. But again, we've uh, uh, screened the uh, the mechanicals um, and uh, provided uh, uh, some railing here uh, for access to the uh, to the uh, to the HVAC materials. Um, but again, the same color scheme, <coughs> color scheme across the across the rear, and of course the sides as well. These buildings are are attached. So here's the visible side of uh, of, of K1. Same uh, same treatment, same materials, same colors, and then the, the K2 building, uh, the iron gray on the on the Karen Way side. All right. Any comments from uh, here's board the, members? Here's the other <laughs> sleeve. That one looks looks better. It's not a not a huge long ambulatory center. What's anybody comment? Uh, nope. Looks good. Peter. Yeah, looks good. The uh, awnings are those like a cloth or uh, a fabric? Awning? Yeah, they're yeah. fabric. Yeah. Ready for that? Jeff, did you want these back? I will reuse them. Yes, they are. Right, right. That's not. <laughs> All right, in that case, I move we accept architecture as presented for K1 and K2. Second. Moved and seconded. Call to question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 7 0. And there you have the uh, gazebo, Y3. And, all right, our gazebo. So, um, our dog park gazebo. Um, so, the, uh, the, this is the, the second dog park that's thinking. A small dog park, not, not for small dogs, but. <laughs> small dog park um, uh, is located uh, off of the, uh, the connector road out to Victory Lane, uh, and we have the, the gazebo here. It's a it's a fairly typical 12 uh, uh, 12 foot diameter uh, gazebo with a cupola, uh, wrapped white vinyl posts, um, and uh, black shingles and uh, gray composite uh, decking. So not uh, uh, reserved. This comes. Pre-made, it's just uh, just dropped on site. It's not uh, built on site. Will we yeah. have those plantings around it too? We will not have these plantings <laughs> about this. Is the, uh, but this was the nicest picture I could find of one. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Without those plantings, uh, forget it. <laughs> uh, and there, there's some seating inside the gazebo. Yes, yeah, so there'll be That's benches. Uh, we've got five built-in benches um, uh, for the for the you know the, the eight panels, but. Um, I'm not going to have one obviously at the entrance or the one right off the side of the entrance. The yep. other five panels will have benches on them. Okay, great. Yeah, that allows for some getting out of the sun or the rain, whatever yes. the case may be, with who's ever at the park. Any comments on this? That's good. I move yeah. we accept architecture as presented for Y3. Second. Moved and seconded. Call to question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 7 0. Thank you all. Jeff, can you just uh, send us in the uh, display with the color materials? Because I, I don't think we have that. If you could just email I, us. I'm sorry, what, what's the, the? Just the displays that, that indicate the color of the materials. The ones that you're showing now. Because we, we, we've got the pictures, but not the labels. Um, it, it was on the, the letter. It's, it's okay. the, right, it's yes. on the letter and the, and the, the actual the elevation is not the color rendered elevations. Call out the colors. Oh. Okay. But yeah, uh, the, I'll, I'll, I'll check that. Yeah. Okay. Right. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, the cover letter of each one detailed some of the colors. All right. Thank you, right. Jeff. Thank uh, you. Have a good night. Thanks for hanging in there. For, uh, next up is uh, Chili's South Road Architecture Update. Who's here representing that? Hi, my name is Anthony. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. We can't see you, but we can hear you. Awesome. Okay. Um, I'm just going to try to share my screen here. Yep. Are you able to see that? Yes, perfect. So, hi. My name is Nandini, and I'm with Brinker, representing Chili's. Um, and we are... Um, proposing a, a repaint, kind of a refresh program. This is part of our national rollout program. You know, it's not exactly rebranding, but um, we're really 
going and implementing these color schemes and new metal awnings on all of our buildings uh, across the country. Um, so the really small changes, nothing really majorly different from what was already there. Um, you know, we're just proposing that we're going to paint the tops and the bottoms of these windows um, in the colors that you're seeing. Um, and then we're replacing um, the existing awnings. So that's the existing awning, the red and green right now. And we come back and we take them out, keep the same frames, and put um, standing seam black metal awnings instead. They're just a lot more durable. Um, you know, the previous red and green awnings kind of tend to fade over the years and start looking dirty. Yeah. Um, these these just be really new and they're easy to clean, easy to maintain, um, you know, they, and they don't fade. So that's really it. The gray shingles on the roof are going to stay as is. The signage stays as it is. We're not proposing anything new. Um, the red doors will be repainted, just a different shade of red. Um, then we come in and we change the bulbs to LED. Okay, save a little energy too. Yep, absolutely. Uh, as long as you're not, I mean, our, our town, we, we want to make sure any LED lighting is under 3000 Kelvin. We don't want any real hot, hot bright spots. Yeah, we don't do the the ones that create hot spots. So no, keep it's that, keep pretty that gentle. Mind, yeah. mm -hmm. All right, looks good. Uh, yeah, the red green uh, awnings there are getting kind of tattered as it is, so be good to upgrade. Mm -hmm. yep. Any comments from board members? Looks good. Good. In that case, I move we accept architecture as presented. Second. Move to second. Call to question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion passes 7 0. You're good to go. Thanks. Thank you. For hanging in there. Appreciate it. Thanks. Have a good night. Thank you. You too. Bye. One more thing up is uh, Central Hudson substation mm -hmm. time extension. So I move the planning board grant a one year time extension, moving the approval expiration date from May 21st, 2022 to May 21st, 2023. Second. Could I ask uh, one question? Yep. Has there been, have there been any changes made to the site plan? This project since we voted on it the only changes were that uh, as we talked about during the um, site plan approval process was that we microsited the plantings and there was a reduction in the number of them all altogether if you remember they were very packed in when we went out on the site we there were some spots that just doesn't they don't work so we, we did have to reduce a few but they're been strategically moved around to fill in the, the gaps and to survive cat um, channel nap was part of our it looks very barren, you know, when you consider the amount of time they've been working on that. Yeah. I just want to make sure that we're keeping their, their feet to the fire, so to speak, yeah. in terms of the plantings, because so far it's not really impressive. Yeah, we're got, well, they haven't done any on the south side yet, so that still has to be done. Um, and we will be going back out there actually next Friday, a week from tomorrow, uh, meeting with the neighbors again, me, uh, looking at the, how the plants have overwintered. And uh, we'll see how. We'll see what yeah, we can and do. they do have a responsibility, as I recall, to maintain the they do. vegetation. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and uh, yeah, I want you to make sure you know, make sure, Carol, and you focus also on you know, where the north exit kind of curves curves out. But there was a bunch of planting planned there. Right now, it's just some trees in Presidio. So okay. I know, yeah, what I know they, they haven't done anything on the south side there, but I think there's a few missing on the north entrance. On that north. What they as well. portray to the board is a far cry right. from where there is. Yeah. yeah. The renderings that we saw were hiding the state, you know, the <coughs> things were obviously grown up a little more. But yeah, I mean, a lot of that but it's will also grow in. I mean, they, especially the spruces. Yeah. But it's, uh, yeah, we we'll try to protect the neighbors as much Did as possible. Scream? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, I have a motion. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Call to question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 7 0. Any other business before the board tonight? Second. <laughs> <laughs> uh, apparently, uh, seeing none. Move to uh, moved and seconded to terminate the meeting. And no special order. Call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Motion passes. Uh, yeah. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.
Take care. Good night, George.